What are the 100 greatest movie stunts of all time? Stunt performers play an integral part to cinema and help make some of our favorite movies of all time possible. Let's break down the greatest stunts ever done on camera. What's up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. And today we're doing the 100 best stunts of all time in movies. Stunt work are instrumental to many of our favorite movies, not just the action genre. And stunt people put their lives on the line for our entertainment. And we thought, how about we make a whole episode to celebrate them? Yeah, we love stunt people. We love stunts. We love big bombastic action sequences, but also you'd be surprised how many stunts take place in smaller films, even romantic comedies, dramas. Stunt people are essential to your favorite movies getting made every single year. They put their bodies and lives on the line on a day-to-day -day basis. They're incredible and they make movie magic possible. Of course, we're going to go through and you're going to hear a lot of familiar names. You're going to hear a lot of Tom Cruise, a lot of Jackie Chan, a lot of the same action movie franchises that we all love. But also we'll do some obscure ones as well as we pick stunts that maybe they're not the most dangerous, but cinematically they're very visually stunning or really cool or just great for a story. Plus, we're doing this based off big like stunts not just an action scene not a fight scene not a car chase a specific stunt in general is what we're doing with this list but we are going to do other episodes in the future of the best car chases and the best movie fights of all time oh so hell yeah we'll do those so eventually yeah. we're doing the list and like there's too many fight scenes because it's like yes yeah, stunts fights are stunts but also let's just do a list of the best stunts like big set stunts and you'd be surprised how many very old films have some of the greatest stunts ever performed on screen still to this day some of them 80 years old some some of them 100 years old so you're going to be surprised when you hear some of these but let's start off our list are we're we going 100 to 1 100 to 1 let's do it now let's start our list off with a very familiar action film one of the greatest of all time and that is t2 from james cameron not only one of the greatest action films of all time but one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time and you'll see it a few times on this list it's going to be seen quite a few times and then it's not only known for its incredible visual effects for the t1000 but remarkable stunt work one of the most insane stunts in the film is during the L.A. River chase when the Terminator finds Lil John Connor and he proves himself to be a hero this time. He takes him on his motorcycle, on his chopper, and then the T-1000 chases them across L.A. The Terminator takes him and John Connor into the L.A. River, driving in that, un driving in that open area, and the T-1000 drives the 18-wheeler off of the bridge and onto the LA River. This was actually performed for real and it looks incredible. This is a really cool shot. They got a lot of coverage, but they had to get one close up of Arnold in the kids. So they did a little rear projection shot. If you look closely on a rewatch, you'll be able to catch that. But otherwise, they filmed the stunt entirely for real. It's an epic stunt and it's again. Crazy. Just the first from T2, Terminator 2. What a moment. One of, the, one of the best action movies ever. Let's move on to another great action film. We have Die Hard. Specifically, the vent scene. There's a vent jump where... Uh, this is where John McClane is hanging from the vent shaft after he has been running from the terrorists who have machine guns and he's out of bullets and he's running. It's after um he jumps off the roof too, right? Yes. And he goes to that little se secret area tunnel he's been traveling through and he goes to the the ventilation system of the skyscraper and hangs down with, his, with a gun belt. And he's hanging down a little bit mm -hmm. and then he falls and and he goes down to one vent lower and then jumps across to the other vents. Yes. And so I so they built this structure, not obviously not doing this on a In skyscraper, the real <laughs> but they actually built this set with the stunt performer doing this and he was supposed to catch the first vent, but he slipped and caught the second one down, which they actually kept in the movie. Yeah. I it's mean, a great moment. Yeah. Terrific stunt. And honestly... A nail-biting scene. <laughs> yeah, anytime they're a terrorist chasing you, it's nail-biting. But still, when he takes the gun, he's just using the strap to go down. Yeah. It's nice and slow, and it starts to bend. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. <laughs> so what, excellent. what a movie. So excellent. Next up, we have, at 98, RRR. There's a lot of great stunt work in this film, a lot of great action sequences. If you've seen the film, it's absolutely epic. And one of our favorite stunts from the film is the jail escape, which is remarkable for its use of incredible wire work. Huge set piece, beautiful production design, and they really pulled it off into an exciting sequence, so full of action, and so well done by the stunt team. Let's move on to a matrix that we will 
pretend exists for temporary reasons because the Matrix Resurrections has an incredible wire it does. stunt. It does. So they have this the scene where Neo and Trinity jump off the building, and Neo hasn't been able to fly yet, obviously. But Trinity then access her one powers, and she can fly. So they jump off the building. This is really Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss and Keanu Reeves doing the stunt. Incredible wire work rigging. And so they actually did this jump 550 feet above in the air. It's a great part of the film. It's probably the only. <laughs> <laughs> but they did do it for real, which I appreciated in watching the film. It definitely doesn't look like CGI at all. They, they pulled it off. It's a cool, cool stunt, and the entire team did a remarkable job with that. Yeah. It's a really incredible stunt. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie doesn't really... It's just... Uh, they're making a fifth one. Here ah! we go. Anyways, incredible stunt work. Yes. Okay, at number 96, we got our first James Bond stunt. The James Bond franchise is famous for its stunt work. There's going to be a lot of Bond films on this list, and there are going to be a few surprises of Bond films you might not know about. But first up is probably the most popular recent contemporary Bond film, and that is Skyfall. It's full of stunt work and great sequences, but our favorite is the incredible train fight stunt on the opening scene of the film. This, this is actually Daniel Craig and the stunt performer and actor fighting for real on an actual moving train the entire time, and then the stunt performer being shot and thrown off the train into the water below. Incredible, impressive, visually stunning, and you can just tell they did it all for real, and audiences can tell. Next up, we have a really cool and fun <laughs> stunt from Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. We have specifically during the Battle of Helm's Deep, Legolas surfs downstairs using a shield and is shooting arrows at the same time. Da, 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 it's da, da, just badass. Da, it's so cool. It's obviously maybe not as dangerous da, 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 as some of these are, other stunts we've done already so far, but it's still really it was famous. It's, but it's awesome. When it's an we, awesome when moment. When we were kids, everybody talked about that moment. Like it was so impactful. It was you know an I mean? impactful moment. It was like everybody was like, oh, hey, Legolas surfing. It's amazing. Like, it's so cool. That's why it's like, obviously, there have been more dangerous, impressive stunts done, but that's impact on the story and just its lore is just fantastic. Yeah. Very cool stunt. Iconic. Man, what a great moment. Next up, we have a Jason Statham movie, Crank, which is a fucking insane action movie about this guy trying to stay alive. So he's constantly like, Keeping his heart rate at a certain level. No, it's adrenaline. He adrenaline. Has to, he has to keep adrenaline pumping because he's been given a poison. He has an yeah. hour to live, and if he lets that poison get into his blood vessel, I mean, in his heart, and he dies, but the adrenaline, you know, keeps him going. Oh, is that what it so is? So he has to keep adrenaline pumping. That's why he gotcha, gets the yeah. epinephrine pens and mm -hmm. doing stuff like hanging from a helicopter. Yeah. So we have a sequence of him hanging from a helicopter, which is unbelievable. Can you describe it in a little more detail? So Jason Statham actually did this. He went on in the helicopter. They, him and one of the villains, they have a fight. While they're hanging from the chopper, yes. they're wired in, but just one cable, one wire each. And they're actually really doing it, and Statham's up there in the air doing this with the helicopter. And it's pretty badass. And then eventually the scene ends where they both fall from the helicopter, which yeah. is not real. It's obviously done in a studio and a soundstage, that part. You can tell very clearly with the green <laughs> screens. But it's, it's a really cool stunt to do that, especially when you're the lead, you're an actor, to go on a helicopter and hang from it maybe a thousand feet in the air and yeah. do a fight scene on the edge of it. It's very cool. Yeah, good for them. And that's a pretty fun action movie. They made a couple of them. Yeah, but I, mean, I remember seeing yeah. that when I was like 15. It was super funny. <laughs> what a great, a great LA movie too. Yeah, it's pretty sick. All right, move us on to the next one, James. So we have The Dark Knight. We're going to do The Hospital Explosion, which isn't exactly a stunt per se, but because Heath Ledger is pretty close to the building, we have pyrotechnics and there's an explosion. The hospital is about to collapse 100 feet behind him after it gets triggered by the team, by, by the pyro team. It's still, I think, we call it, classify it as a stunt. Plus, he's acting. And they have yeah. one shot at this, so it's a really important shot to do in the film. They have one take to get this right because the building's going to explode and tumble and fall to the ground. So it's a really good scene. There's a lot of confusion about whether the trigger that Joker's pressing is actually delayed, if it's not really working. That's part of the script. Heath Ledger, even though he's such a great actor, he doesn't break character at all despite a building blowing up behind him. The part where the trigger isn't working, it's all part of the script. It's all part of the plan, but it still looks incredible. And obviously the debris that's blowing out of the out of the building, it's rubber, it's soft, it's, you know, styrofoam. It's not actual concrete or, or yeah. blocks of stone, so it's soft material, <laughs> of course. But still, because he's close to the building, we're going to call yeah. it a stunt. Yeah, they set up a bunch of metal barrels at the windows inside of the building, and then when they set up the pyrotechnics, they also shot out 
all of the debris from these barrels from the windows. So all of the debris that actually falls around Heath Ledger, none of that is visual effects. That is all really there for real, and it looks fantastic. Heck yeah. Iconic moment. All right, next up, we have one of the more recent films on the f- on the list. We have the John Wick 3 rooftop fall at number 92. This is at the end of Parabellum. At the, he's speaking with the, what's the lawyer girl's name? I mean, what, what, what's their name? I don't Arbiter, remember. Ar- Arbiter or something? Something. Something like that. And then Winston, in order to save his Continental, he has to, quote, quote, kill John Wick, so he shoots him in the chest a few times, knocking John Wick off the top of the building. And the fall is fantastic. It's brutal, and it's real. It looks so good. And after this, you're like, how can he get up after that? But you know he is. They filmed this actually, uh, Jackson Siddle was the stunt guy who did this. Mm-hmm. Broad daylight on a, in, a, in a studio outside with uh, blue screens, and they built the actual structure of the side of the building for him to tumble down with rubber padding on it. So he actually did the fall, yeah. but blue screen structures behind him, so they CGI'd that onto a city landscape. Mm-hmm. But he actually did the fall, which looks is great. absolutely insane and incredible. And It looks like it hurt a lot. <laughs> it does. Oh my god. I, the whole audience winced when he landed. Yeah, but it's a great stunt, it really is. And that's not the only John Wick stunt you'll see on this list either. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Even the railings were rubberized yeah. to protect him. Move on to the next one. I did, th- I did oh, 92. Did. Yeah. Well, I did two in a row, but I'll take this one. So Baby Driver has a ton, a ton of great stunt driving with that red Subaru WRX. And we had a gr- they had a great stunt team mm-hmm. of drivers. But there's a specific stunt where the car is he's driving it through this alleyway, then he does a 360 spin, right? Yeah. And he does it between trucks and cars. I believe one of the cars was CGI yeah. inputted, but still, it's a very impressive stunt to do in such tight quarters with objects all around you. Yeah, So he and he was still propelling forward as he spun. And it looks fantastic. I believe one of the cars is not CGI, though, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think just one of them is yeah. just CGI. Because it's a fantastic moment in the film. And what a, what a great, great scene. It's one of the coolest car stunts I've ever seen. Yeah. All right, next up we have a, finally a Tom Cruise stunt in here. Oh, and, it's because it's the, t- the now we're in the top yeah, 90, you know. Wait, wait until we get to the second half of this list. <laughs> <laughs> but first up, we have it. At number 90, we have the zero, zero gravity plane crash scene in The Mummy. This happens at the end of the first act and results in Tom Cruise's character's death. This is a really fantastic fantastic stunt that they did, did for real in zero G. So they actually, what they did was they flew the plane in the air and then they let it drop. And this allowed the the stunt performers and the actors inside of the plane. It provided a space of zero G for them, which I believe lasted about a minute at tops. So they had to do the scene over and over again. So they would do the scene. I think it's 22 seconds you get. Okay, something like that. Yeah, Very short amount of time. Seconds. They did it for Apollo 13, the Tom Hanks movie yeah. as well. So you get about 22, 25 seconds yeah. of zero G. There's a special kind of plane that people do this with. And uh, it's a really fantastic scene, one of the best parts of the film. But also it took so much painstaking effort because they had to fly up, do the stunt, land, check it out, make adjustments, take notes, and then do it up, fly up again and do it again. So I'm not sure how many times they did it, but I do know they did it many, many times. And it did pay off because it looks fantastic. Many, many times. Let's move on to number 89 on our list. We have another car stunt. We have the Dark Knight in the underpass chase sequence. One of the SWAT vans up front of the convoy gets hit by a garbage truck that's being driven by a henchman into the river it's a jaw-dropping moment that mm-hmm. whole scene's full of them but i think it's one of the most exciting parts of the film never really seen anything quite like it before especially that great helicopter shot they got from a, in, above the river mm-hmm. as the van gets hit out it just looks stunning never quite seen anything like it filmed that way before but it's incredible practical filmmaking and a then, lot of miniatures were used for the scene yeah but that's practical and then holding he held the camera for like a good five seconds and it really showed us the impact of that moment yeah. and no music you just hear the silence of the crashing in the water and you're like oh my god this is unbelievable I, I remember just being blown away just from that one moment there's a bunch of dark knight stunts we're gonna get to soon as well all right next up we have another terminator 2 move epi- uh, stunt <laughs> this time we have a helicopter flying under a bridge underpass so this is the sequence where the t-1000 has piloted a helicopter and is chasing John Connor, his mom, Sarah Connor, and the T-800 in a truck uh, on the freeway. And so the point, James Cameron wanted the helicopter to fly under the underpass. 
But the team was like, this is too dangerous. You should probably just do visual effects. And they were trying to figure out a way around it. They were like, why don't we fly it over it, the bridge? Does he really have to go under it? And James Cameron just was, just, was just like, let's try it and see what happens. And the pilot was down for it. And so the pilot actually did fly a real helicopter underneath that underpass. They did it in one shot. And once they got it, it was in the can. James Cameron was like really happy with it and moved on. So he was just like, let's give it a shot. And it looks fantastic. It's such a cool moment. Very cool. Very cool. Let's move on to our first Fireburn of the episode. The great art of Fireburns or as such a loved part of the stunt community and stunt work. And for the first one we are doing, it's V for Vendetta. We have Chad Stahelski's Fireburn as character V after he blows up the facility that he's being experimented on, the lone survivor of the genetic experimentation by the government. And Chad Stahelski does an almost naked, fully nude fire burn where he's basically just wearing his protective underwear, but he's covered in the fire resistant gel that stunt performers do before fire burns. Incredible sequence. He's standing amongst a ton of fire. I'm sure he's feeling it a little bit at some point because he's got no clothes on. But we've talked about this burn before in our V for Vendetta episode. We talked about it in our stunt episode recently. And so it's just a really cool stunt. It's badass. It's very dangerous. Well, it's surprisingly less dangerous than you'd think, but he's surrounded by flames, surrounded by fire. Yeah. So it's really cool. He's not completely full body fire burned or anything like that, but it's just he's surrounded by fire, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's a great moment. All right, next up we have our second James Bond film with No Time to Die, the most recent entry in the Bond franchise. This is involving the Matera opening action sequence. Oh my God, what a good scene. <laughs> this this floored me. This was absolutely mind blowing. They did this all for real, uh, directed by uh, Carrie, Fukunaga, Carrie Joji Fukunaga. And this is when Bourne, after the Bond. Bond, after the explosion at the cemetery, uh, escapes the area and finds himself on that narrow bridge and there are henchmen on either side driving towards him. He escapes the car that drives towards him by going behind this little boulder. And then, with nowhere else to go, he decides to leap off the bridge. This was done for real by stuntman David Grant, who leapt from a 130-foot-high bridge in Matera, Italy. The stunt performer jumped with 60 feet of slack into a gold tail decelerator and then swung under the bridge. It's an incredible sequence. I remember my jaw dropped when I saw it. The audience went silent, and it was just such a cool moment to see. And I love, I just love how he like did this like spread eagle with his arms, and he jumped over. It was just like incredible. I was like, holy shit! And with the Bond film, we've seen so many stunts. You gotta try and do something that will still surprise the audience. And I think they did a great job with that. Let's move on to an incredible driving stunt in Nightcrawler, the Jake Gyllenhaal starring film. And this scene is towards the end of the movie where he's being there's a police chase and he's also chasing that black van and so what happens is from their pov inside the car uh, the the black van slams inside into a police car which is sliding sideways and then the police car spins out and slides like a hundred feet while the other cars are sliding as well so the mm -hmm. the black suv and the police car hit into each other while the police car is already on its side yeah it's the hood of the car as it's spinning to keep the spinning going and then they both slide for like 50 to 100 feet it's insane it's a crazy moment yeah it's an awesome and the way they filmed it is just that police car is cruising sideways yeah <laughs> it's so cool it's an incredible shot the sparks flying everywhere and it's just like the empty street yeah the empty boulevard it's fantastic at number 84 we have another stunt from the matrix the dojo fight between Morpheus and Neo is one of the most iconic fight scenes, but it involves in a memorable stunt that is, I think, one of the most iconic moments of the Matrix, Matrix franchise and is representative for the advancement of Neo's skills within the Matrix, and that is the wall flip. This is when Neo, playing around with his newfound powers and abilities, runs up the wooden beam and then does a backflip over Morpheus. It doesn't end well, when he gets a, a foot in the chest, but it's an incredible moment. Great use of slow motion to really shock the audience and gave us something we had never really seen before. Fantastic moment. Let's get back into Terminator 2 and do a motorcycle jump onto the LA River in the scene. It's the Terminator. It looks like a, a Harley Davidson maybe, and they jump well, it's about probably a 20-foot drop into oh, yeah. the barren Los Angeles River, which is that what it looks like most of the time, most of the year. <laughs> it's barren and dry as fuck. 
uh, depending on what part of LA you're it's in. It's more of a road than a river now. And it's an incredible drop, and it's a dangerous stunt. And it was not done by Arnold, of course. It was done by his stunt double at the time, Peter Kent. And you can tell it's real just the way the motorcycle lands. Like if they CGI'd it, it's the little idiosyncrasies of that that autom of that autom automobile of how it moves, how it bumps, how it wiggles around. And you, you can just tell it's done for real. You know what I mean? When things like that are CGI'd, oftentimes the landings are too perfect or too smooth. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they wouldn't they don't capture like the realism of what that device, if it landed from that height, like what it would really move like. It's a 1991 Harley Davidson Fat Boy. Fat Boy. Looked it up. Nice. All right, let's move into an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Uh, made so many, so many great in films with huge set pieces. And then one of the most iconic moments from all of his films is in North by Northwest. And this is the famous crop duster scene where Cary Grant is chased by the crop duster on the field. They did this for real. And now... What he's doing is he's running towards the camera, and the camera is tracking backwards, leading him. And they, th in the background, the crop duster flies lower and lower and lower until it hovers just above Cary Grant, who dives, b dive bombs to the ground. It's fantastic. It's a remarkable use of real practical stunt work, and it works perfectly. The framing is incredible. And this is a moment where when audiences saw that, it made them jump in their seats because they'd never seen anything quite like that before. It was really insane. Makes me jump in my seat yeah, now. It's so well done. Like and it's before. not green screen. It's not rear projection. Hitchcock is famous for using so much rear projection in his films, but this was done for real. Next up, we have another Dark Knight scene, another stunt here, which makes sense because it's one of the greatest movies of all time with some of the best set pieces we'll ever see in an action film, where it's the opening shot, opening scene, where the robbers, the jokers, hunt henchmen and heist men, they blast out the window of the skyscraper in Gotham, and then they shoot a line across the building, and then the stunt performers travel that line across the city streets, several hundred feet in the air, to the roof of the other building. And it's an incredible opening. He's always known for his great openings in a lot of his action movies, especially Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, which yeah. we'll talk about later on as well. But this is such a great opening. It's so cool. The big drums. I remember being... I was just absolutely floored by that in theaters. So in IMAX. Cool. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? This is crazy. All right, next up, we have a Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And we are talking about the great fire burn in the previous film from Rick Dalton's history, The 15 Fingers of McCluskey. 15 Fists. 15 Fists of McCluskey. <laughs> 15 fists. What a picture. What a picture. The 15 Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> 15 Fists of McCluskey. And this is the multiple person fire burn. So this is when Rick Dalton ignites all of the Nazis on fire what in you, the What'd you say? Anybody order or sauerkraut any sandwiches? Fried sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody order fried sauerkraut? <laughs> and so this was actually done for real. No CGI involved. They did it with multiple takes. And this was done with uh, 12 second increments every time the fire burn was done. It lasted about 12 seconds. And it included so many stunt people in the scene being fire burned by a person using the flamethrower. Uh, and notably including Matt Baker, Bob Brown, Travis, Finn Hage, Jeremy Fitzgerald, and Jim Palmer. What a great moment. It's an awesome stunt. It really is to yeah. put that many people on fire at the same time from a flamethrower. It's so badass. It's so cool. It's incredible. And, it, and they did it f multiple takes, which is really bad. It's really cool as well. So it's an incredible <laughs> scene. It's so fun because it's not a part of the movie. It's just a, a little yeah. look into Rick Dalton's past. So it's not super relevant to the plot until the end of the movie, which we'll get to with the other stuff. It's just like a joke. Yeah, yeah. it is. And it's it, also like Tarantino just wants to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but then it, it, it comes into play later on yeah, yeah. In, the, in the final in the climax. Let's move on to number 79 with Charlie's Angels, the good one, starring Lucy <laughs> Liu, Drew Barrymore, and Cameron Diaz. So this is going to be the be in the in the climax of the film. We have an incredible bell tower fall, stair fall, and fight. So Sean, so we have stunt woman Shauna Duggins and Donna Evans. They do an incredible bit of wire work while going through this building, this bell tower. So they're on wires falling through the bell tower. They hit a wooden beam. Then they fall to the ground, dodging the falling bell, which comes crashing down. Also, they crash through a breakaway castle door, which launches themselves, which they launch themselves down 20 stone steps clinched together while fighting wearing skin tight revealing clothing with little to no room for pads so the thing with stunt women specifically often in films especially you know in the 80s 90s early 2000s movies they are wearing wardrobe that you know is very tight or revealing so they can't 
hide that many pads. Usually some people are wearing lots of pads, back pads, you're wearing a pad in your ass, elbow pads, wrist pads, if, wrist pads if you can, knee pads, but a lot of women have the issue where they can't really fit any of that into mm -hmm. their wardrobe because the movie gives them this specific wardrobe. I can't fit any pads on me. So they did this scene with minimal padding. They're in just these tight leather latex wardrobe. So you can't put a pattern in there because you'll see it as yeah. an audience member. So a lot of women have a lot. Of, well, I mean, it makes them even more badass where they're doing a lot of stunts with minimal padding based off the wardrobe they're given because it's oftentimes not much. Yeah. Damn. So kudos to them. That's for tough. Doing that with no stats, it's, with no pads or almost no pads. It's so cool. It's a good scene. Yeah. Fantastic moment. Next up, we have at number 78, The Great Escape, one of the great classics in American cinema. This involves Steve McQueen, one of the action goats, and it is the motorcycle jump over the fence. So this is after uh, the army, the British army, escape from their captivity. They finally dug out. They finally ran off, and everybody just spreads out in the countryside. They all run off. Uh, some of them steal cars, some of them, Steve McQueen's character steals a motorcycle, and they're all just like in it. It's like every man for himself. Let's just try and run away as far as we can and see if we can get out alive. And Steve McQueen is on a motorcycle being chased by a bunch of uh, Nazis. They're, they're chasing him in all directions. He's got nowhere to go, and there's a huge barbed wire fence that stretches across the entire countryside, and there's really nothing he can do. But he does find a little ridge, and his character rides the motorcycle over the barbed wire fence and lands on the other side safely. This was done for real. Steve McQueen, who is who was an uh, experienced race car driver and a very experienced motorcycle driver, did not actually perform the stunt, even though many people might think he did. He was actually new to riding motorcycles, and he had just really begun that. And so they did have a stuntman do the stunt, and he went 60 feet across. It's pretty badass. On a motorcycle. Let's move on to a great action film. Speed, starring Keanu Reeves, and specifically the stunt where his character has to jump from a convertible, a moving car that he's sort of just kind of hijacked. Well, he didn't hijack. He just forced himself into this guy's convertible, who's driving the car for him up to the bus on the freeway, which can't reduce its speed lower than 55 miles per hour or something like that, or else it'll like blow up. And so what's he have to do? He has to jump from the convertible to the moving van's open door, next to each other, and Keanu actually did this stunt himself. He didn't have a stuntman do it. Uh, the director didn't want him to do it, but he convinced <laughs> him to do it. And Keanu said he somehow, he's, he said he'd been practicing it. Uh -huh. I don't know how you practice it besides doing Jumping it. Jumping from a car to a bus? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so he pulled it off, and it looks awesome. And, and it's, it's crazy because his feet fall to the ground while he's hanging on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did that for acting purposes to make it seem like he's going to fall, but it's a pretty good fucking stunt. It's a crazy stunt. They're yeah. probably not going 55. They're probably yeah. going like 20, yeah. maybe. It looks fast on camera, yeah. though. It's it still, looks very it's still fast. still very dangerous. Yeah, you put a long long lens on that, you yeah. crush that depth of field, yeah. probably looks like it looks they're super going 50. Fast. Yeah. yeah, It's a good stunt. Lots of Keanu on this list, obviously. But there's also a lot of Tom Cruise on this list. <laughs> so we're next up at 76, we have Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. And one of the most incredible moments of that film is the great motorcycle chase these winding roads down the mountainous valley road, going really fast, dodging and weaving cars, and then having the motorcycle wreck uh, at the end of it where Ethan Hunt does get away. Uh, more, uh, the motorcycle chase, they did drive very fast, and, and you can actually see Tom Cruise driving the motorcycle so low to the ground when he's making the dicey turns. It's incredible. Incredible moment. Absolutely. Incredible. Let's do another John Wick stunt specifically. John Wick 4... We have a great escalator fall stunt. So stair falling is sort of a bread and butter move for stunt people. This How one hurt. However, this one definitely hurt because it's on an escalator. So it's metal and very <laughs> pointy and rigid. And it's, you're going to feel that. And the stunt guy did an incredible job. I'm trying to pull up his name right now and see if I can. And it's a long one. It's tall. And he did multiple multiple uh, takes of it. It's insane. The the audience was reacting Vincent, to this one. Vincent. Hold on, I got it right here. So Vincent, pulling up his name right now. Just give him the respect that he deserves for this crazy stunt. Come on, Vincent. And he, he Vincent was, Boyan. He was hitting it hard. So he's one of Keanu's stunt doubles. And Vincent Boyan fell down that goddamn escalator maybe four or five times i think and yeah. it looks excellent yeah it really does it looked like it hurt man so holy good job shit. vincent because it was like you have the walls so you can't he, he couldn't like really stretch out at all he and it was just like 
the falling, the every hit hurt. It yeah. Like. Well, there's an R2 falling downstairs. Yeah. It's going to hurt, but if you do it right, it doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. And you won't really break anything at all. But like An I escalator. said, metal pointy stairs, that's going to hurt no matter what. Ouchies. All right, next up. <laughs> Ouchies. Next up, we have a Michael Bay film. At number 74, we have Transformers Dark of the Moon. Now, Transformers does have so much great stunt work and explosions and practical effects combined with its visual effects. One of the most impressive stunts in the entire franchise is the real base jump these stunt performers did in Transformers Dark of the Moon. I can't remember the scene exactly, but this is like in the city when Transformers are like chasing them. And this team does an actual real base jump off a skyscraper and flies across much of the city. And this was done for real. They shot it with drone footage and helicopter footage, and it looks really fantastic. All right. And the the, the uh, actual guys had cameras on them, too. Yeah. Can you do the next one, District B-13? I haven't seen this movie since you were teenagers. Okay, District B-13. It's a great, like, it's basically a parkour action movie. From France, right? From France, and it's really awesome. So uh, the men, the two lead actors are great parkour athletes, and they were the leads of this film. Free running. Yeah, and there's an cr- incredible moment. So there's so many great stunts in this film. Like, but you, we have to pick one, and it's the window jump in B-13. So... Uh, he's being chased. This guy's being chased by bad guys in a building, and then he sees an open window, and there's a rope dangling outside, about three feet hanging out of the window, and it's being hung from a railing on the se- on the roof. So he decides to jump out of the window with a free jump, grab the rope, and then he swings around the building. And he did the, the stunt guy. This guy did it for real. He's the actor in the film. He's the parkour athlete. He did it for real. They did a bunch of different angles of the shot, and you can see him. He just jumps out the window and grabs the rope. And it's like if he didn't grab the rope, he would have gone down. You know what I mean? So he wasn't roped in. It's an incredible moment. And he then he had he has the the athleticism to to wind himself around the corner of the building as well and get away. It's a great moment. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Crazy. We had the uh, free-running world champion in our film, Norse Game. Oh, wow. Ed Scott. He's a pretty incredible That's athlete. That's crazy. Really incredible athlete. Let's move on to the next stunt. Back to the Dark Knight. Another great stunt sequence here. So this is the scene, uh, the climax of the film, when Joker has taken over that skyscraper. He's waiting for the boats to blow themselves up or blow the other boat up. He's just waiting up there. <laughs> chilling. He's chilling. I'm waiting for somebody to blow up the boats. And then we have the sequence where Batman... It's not well. We have the, it's the patients or yes. the actually the terrorists, but then the people that are dressed up like terrorists are actually all right. People duct taped. People duct, duct tape, right? Yeah. So so the terrorists are dressed up as doctors. And so Batman, or is it no? Batman ties them all together. It's the stump. Never so mind. It's the SWAT people. SWAT the, team. the SWAT team yeah. that's going in to After take Batman. out ba- Batman. Yes. They get tied up by Batman. He connects all the ropes together and then he kicks one person off the roof and they all tumble one at a time <laughs> and they're all <laughs> roped together. And is that, oh, it's the, bat, the Dark Knight yeah. theme. It's just the drums that plays. Oh, I get scene. it, man. I get it. It's a great moment. And so they are dangling now from a 420 foot drop from this Fuck. building attached by one common line as well as separate cable ties, cables attached to individual the De- deceleration devices, very cool, performed by Mark Harper, Luke Kearney, Tom Lowell, Mark Mottram, and Brian Peters. Gotham just proved there's ready to believe in good. Sometimes you have to do everything yourself. <laughs> You're alone. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, you want to know how I got these scars? I haven't done my Joker voice in a No, while. but I know how you got these. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> like gravity, all it needs is madness. Like gravity, all it takes is a little push. What I brought you your tell? white knight to <laughs> our level. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> all right, next up we have a great stunt at number 71. Mission Impossible, the first film. And we're talking about the iconic vault scene where Ethan Hunt has to rope down into the CIA vault and grab the knock list without touching the floor or making too much sound or letting a drop of sweat hit the censored floor. This is an iconic moment, not just in the franchise, but just in movie history. This is such a great, iconic image to see Tom Cruise dangling. This incredible stunt work by him. The balance required to do this has got to be insane. 
Uh, he ended up weighing the, his feet down with some some quarters he put in his shoes to help balance himself out. But there's a great amount of suspense in this film, in this moment, from uh, the noise factor plus nearly falling and collapsing on the ground. Uh, and just barely, he's like only a couple inches above the ground and he can't touch anything. He's just he's like spread eagle waving his arms and legs just trying to remain upright. It's an incredible moment and such a great dramatic scene for the film. Let's move back to James Bond and talk about Skyfall and specifically the motorcycle chase on the rooftop. So this film had great stunt performers and stunt drivers for the motorcycles, including Paul Edmondson as well as Robbie Madison. And Who's done for real. Also, we have... Yeah, Robbie Madison, Paul Edmondson. They did incredible stunt work riding the motorcycle and riding the dirt bike uh, on top of the buildings as well as jumping off the buildings. And specifically that one where they're on that narrow peak of the buildings. Yeah. I guess that's what, how you describe it. It's sort mm -hmm. of just in the center point of all the apexes of the roofs. And they just drive on the, on the very narrow strip. It's mm -hmm. really incredible. So the both of them are doing that. It's, yeah. it's pretty fucking sick. Done for real. It's insane. All right. At number 69, we have... <laughs> A stunt from Fast and Furious, the Fast and the Furious, the first one. We have the iconic car flip. This is when Dominic Toretto and what's his name? I'm sorry. What's Paul Walker's name in that? Uh, Brian. Brian. Uh, this is when after he told he's already told Brian yeah, the story. Get the tuna on wheat. Nobody <laughs> likes the tuna here. <laughs> He already told uh, Brian about the the race. The was it forty? How many? How long is this? It's like quarter mile. Quarter mile. Quarter mile to the train tracks. Yeah. And then they end up and they end up doing it at the end of the film. It's an iconic moment. Uh, the, the stakes between the two characters, the drama, and then they both set off, and they race for that train tracks. They both make it out. They mo they barely skate by as the train is about to hit them, and they both pass the tracks. And they both look at each other like kind of like, oh, fuck, yeah, we did it. But a truck pulls out of a driveway in front of Toretto and his charger slams right into it and barrel rolls and just t gets torn to pieces. It's an incredible stunt. It's so shocking. And just seeing the twisting metal and the silence and then just the banging of the, of the automobile on the pavement. It's such a great moment. All right, let's get back into uh, the Terminator world, but talk about Terminator Salvation, the one, one of the ones that we just don't like to think of, <laughs> starring Christian Bale as John Connor. This film features a 70-foot motorcycle jump with no wire on that tricked-out and redesigned Ducati as sort of like a, a termo moto bike. It's pretty cool, and they did this with no wires again on an actual stunt bike, and it's absolutely incredible stunt. It's really badass. 70 feet. 70 feet motorcycle jump. No That's wires. crazy, man. I'm trying to find the stunt performer's name. Unbelievable. I'll see if I can find it. Tom did a great one in Oblivion, too. A great motorcycle jump. Yeah, well, he, we yeah. can't do, like, all Tom Cruise movies, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, I'll, look, I'll go into the next one while you find their name. Okay. At number 67, we have another stunt from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And we have uh, the great finale of Cliff fighting off the intruders with his pit bull. And stunt woman, Michaela McAllister, is really the star of this action sequence when she's charged by the pit bull. The dog launches at her and launches onto her arm, taking her to the ground. She is then thrown around across the room through most of the sequence, thrashing wildly while the dog continued its attack. This is done for real. After being released by the dog, she then runs through a glass door, smashing to the ground. From there, she stumbles into a pool when Rick then uses... When the stunt man playing Rick then uses a flamethrower and ignites her. She also continues to burn after the flamethrower is disengaged, flailing until she falls forward into the water. The flamethrower was on her for about 8 to 10 seconds as she continued to burn as long as possible before her extinguishing herself underwater. This was all done practically without any CGI, so that scene is as amazing as it is because of Michaela McAllister. Very cool. Couldn't find the stunt guy's name, but too whoever bad. he is, let us know. Let's move on to Predators, one of the more recent Predator films where we have several characters tumble and fall down a steep hill. So this is a 100-foot drop with five stunt performers tumbling and falling down, 
and then going over an 80 foot cliff into free wall into water. No CGI was used for the stunt at all. Performed by Joey Anaya, Jeremy Scott Fitzgerald, Ryan Happy, Dana Reed, and Ryan Ryusaki. Very cool stunt. Hell yes. Hell fucking yes. We also have an Iron Man stunt here. Iron Man's not just CGI, you know. Sometimes they do some real great stunt work. And Iron Man 3 has a great sequence where uh, Air Force One has been attacked. It's Air Force One, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then Iron Man has to save a bunch of falling civilians who have fallen out of the plane. This was done for real by, believe it or not, the Red Bull skydiving team, which was enlisted for this incredible stunt of all these people really falling from the plane and skydiving. It looks fantastic. It's a, a remarkable moment of that film and definitely a highlight of that entire movie. Let's move on to number 64. We have a stunt from Kill Bill. Zoe Bell is the stunt double for Uma Thurman as Beatrix Kiddo in these films, and she's such an incredible stunt woman and stunt performer. And the Crazy 88 fight specifically has so many great stunts that she did, but for us visually, our favorite from the scene is when she runs up the railing of that like 25 step staircase, does a 180, and then uses the sword and slices somebody's throat. It's yeah. absolutely epic One and shot. incredible. She's on a wire, of course, but it's really, really cool stunt. It's it's great stunt work. It's badass, but it's maybe the coolest stunt in that scene, I think. And she does so much in that scene. She really does. She, she really is unbelievable in that movie. It's so good. That's that's my favorite moment for sure. All right, next up we have another James Bond film at number sixty three, Casino Royale, to really jumpstart the new franchise. We had a parkour sequence. <laughs> it's so much fun. What a great six minute six minute action scene. Parkour is really hot in the 2000s. Parkour, parkour! Parkour and free running is very hot. It's a fantastic scene, and I love it. Music's great, and all the stunt sequences are incredible in this, se- in this scene. There's so much to it. There's so many great moments, but we chose one in particular, and that is the jump from crane to crane. And it's, a really, sh- it's really done for real. They had these two huge high cranes, and... The, the bad guy Bond is chasing jumps from one crane to the other, and then Bond's, Bond jumps from one crane to the other. Both these time performers did it for real. It was incredible to behold. Hell yeah. It's just like, you see that, the silence, the music stops, you just hear the wind, and you're like your heart drops for a second. Yeah. Incredible. I bet y'all have been wondering, where's Jackie Chan been? He's all up high. That's Don't worry, because we're not even, now we're in the top 63, 62. Now we're going to get into some Jackie stuff, starting with Drunken Master 2, where Jackie, he's in a great fight in this factory kind of place, and he gets knocked down onto a bed of hot coals, which obviously Jackie did for real with real hot coals because he's a badass in the man. And he basically crawls backwards on hot coals, but in Jackie Chan fashion, he stays on them for like way too long of a period of time yeah. because he has to do everything extra because he's the best. So it takes him like 10, 15 seconds to get off these coals, which he's crawling backwards on. It's uh-huh. so cool. Ironically, his worst injury in that fight was from his eye getting hit. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not the, the coals. hot coals. <laughs> All right, next up, we have silent film star Buster Keaton with his first stunt on this list, but not the last one. We have from the film Hard Luck, and this is an insane stunt where he's saving a woman from a river as she's about to fall down the waterfall. What he does is he straps himself up with a rope on the cliffside, and then just as she is falling down the waterfall, he he repels down, grabs her, and then swings back, and he holds on to her. This is done with a great stunt woman as well. And they dangle back and forth while he's trying to get enough momentum to finally drop her onto the ridge side beside the waterfall. And it's done for real. It's insane. If you watch any stunt sequence montage, you're going to see this stunt in it for sure. Epic. It's insane. You want to hear about an epic stunt? So there's this movie called Hooper, which I've never seen before, but I was looking up stunts and I came across this one. This movie came out in 1978. It's a, a pretty... Looks like a pretty decent action movie, action western kind of film. Mm-hmm. With this crazy chase scene that I saw at the end of the movie that I was watching. With these explosions going off everywhere. And the, the two main characters, they're inside this Oh, red, Bert's in it. Yeah, they're in this red Pontiac. Uh, uh, is it a, a Thunderbird or a Pontiac GT? can't remember. Pontiac Trans Am. Trans Am. Yeah, 78. They're in, a, they're in a Trans Am, which is probably what made that car very cool at the time, this movie. And so what ends up happening is they're out running these explosions that are happening, I think, inside the sewers or something because they keep popping up from the ground, these these big firebombs. 
and they're being chased by guys as well. And then they do a 325 foot jump with the car. Holy shit. And they did this because they rocket powered the vehicle with a rocket engine in the back. And it just flew after it hit the ramp. 325 feet landed. Wow, they did it for real. The car is like for 100. Real. It's like 80 feet in the air. Absolutely insane. Holy shit. Imagine fucking doing that. They put it on the poster. The poster is the car flying in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Hooper. It's a Burt Reynolds film. It looks like they're trying to do their own Duke, Dukes of Hazard. My guess. Especially Flying with right cars car. was, was big back then. Holy shit. I love the poster. Burt Reynolds got a cowboy hat on. He's just blowing a bubble yeah. bubble gum. So they were driving towards a bridge, and the bridge was blown up. And so they just took the car off, then just th- drove it off the bridge. That's mm-hmm. insane to me. That's unbelievable. Wow. All right, next up, we have another stunt from the Dark Knight. And this is the famous 18-wheeler flip. Um, this is an incredible film. Jim Wilkie was the driver of the 18-wheeler. And this is when Batman, using the bat pod, ties up the 18-wheeler. And then the 18-wheeler just fucking front flips. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! On to, and on. it just, it just careens it. onto its back with a massive crash. It's insane. You, it, it's just like you hear the creaking of the metal. And that's all you hear. And then it just fucking lands on the cement. An insane moment. This is a moment that everybody was talking about. They did it for real. Um, they really filmed this. It wasn't obviously with a wire, but um, but with a bunch of uh, pyrotechnics uh, to really lift the, the vehicle upwards. And it's insane. Incredible sequence. So badass. Uh, can you do the next one? What is this, 58, Smoking the Bandit? Absolutely. Can you explain the scene for the listeners, Anthony? So Smoking the Bandit, <laughs> bridge jump. This is when uh, they're being chased. And this is actually another Burt Reynolds movie. He was really into car chases. And then this is just, uh, they're being chased by the showers and they jump a bridge that was broken. This isn't quite as big as the other bridge we were talking about, but they did it for real. Uh, collapsed bridge as they're approaching it. And they jumped it. It's about 60 foot jump, I would say. And it's insane. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Rumble in the Bronx. This is the first time Jackie tried to... Uh, make it in Hollywood and break out as a star here, which didn't work out super well after this film. He went back to China to continue his career there, then came back again. But Rumble in the Bronx is a great action flick and specifically has this epic alley jump over two roofs. And it's a good distance. And it's a cool scene. Can't recommend checking it out enough. But Rumble in the Bronx is a really good movie. It's a wide alley. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> It looks like a street, wide. not an alley. It's pretty wide. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's like between two type buildings at all. And because it's Jackie, he's going to do something crazy, but it's very cool. <laughs> it's insane. And that's, I mean, we're going to get a lot more Jackie Chan in the set, in the bottom half of this list. Next up at number 56, we have Extraction. It's Wonder. Now, the Extraction Wonder is a 12-minute long sequence without a cut that includes a car chase, multiple fight scenes, and a bunch of huge stunts involved with several locations stitched together seamlessly. Um... It's a couple of edits together, but mostly they did this in one take, and it's really insane. Great stunt work by the whole team. And actually, the director, Sam Hargrave, was operating the camera as well. Oh, that's really cool. He was, like, strapped to a car. Because he's, uh, he's also uh, a former stuntman turned director. And so he actually did a lot of, like, the actual camera work, like, running through these scenes and, and literally getting gripped onto vehicles for capturing the footage he wanted to get. Very cool. Let's move on to another James Bond film. Going back to Goldeneye, because this movie just has so many incredible stunts, and it won't be the last time we talk about it. There's a great sequence in St. Petersburg where James Bond, with an AK-47, gets into the side of a tank and starts driving around the streets of St. Petersburg, wreaking havoc on the villains. It's a really cool scene. It's not the most dangerous stunt, obviously, but it's so show it's a stopping. Tank. It's driving a tank around city streets. It's great. In St. Petersburg. It's it's bad. Crashing through bad walls. Ass. Tear, so cool. Tearing through cars. Unbelievable. That must have been so fun to do. <laughs> All right. Next. He's, just a whole, he's got an AK 47 in yeah. a tank. It's just bad ass. Badass. With a suit on and a perfect haircut. If only that movie had a better screenplay. Oh, it could have been. It would have been like the, the best, best James a- Bond. Yeah, it could have been the best action movie ever. Could have been the best James Bond if it had because a better screenplay. There's a couple more stunts from that movie on this list going forward. Yeah. All right, next up, we have another Bustin Keaton stunt. Buster yeah. Keaton. Bust, you said Bustin Keaton. Another Buster Keaton stunt. <laughs> Bustin the, Keaton. The goat of stunt work. And this is from the silent film The General. 
And you'll definitely see this in anything that involves uh, like a stunt sequence for videos. Like this is always up there. And so in this sequence, Buster Keaton is on the face of a train, uh, an old steam engine train. And he's holding a long wooden log, the same the same kind of wooden logs that are the base for train tracks back then. And he's holding it, and there he sees up, up ahead on the tracks, there's another wooden log that's stuck inside the train tracks. And it's kind of angled upwards, pointed up a little bit. And if he doesn't do something, this log, the train's going to hit the log. He's going to be messed up. And so what he does, and he did this for real, this guy must have the brute strength of Buster Keaton. I mean, how strong was this guy? And so what he does is as the train is approaching the wooden log on the tracks, he picks up the log he's holding, lifts it up, and he throws it in such a perfect way that he throws it down onto the, just the edge of the pointed log so that it flips up out of the tracks, clearing the tracks for the train to pass through. Just perfectly timed, and he, he did the perfect throw with precision. Unbelievable. It's that, 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 uh, Early 20th century strength. Yeah, that, he's got that. He had the dog up, in him. He grew up working for a living. Yeah, he, grew, he grew up in a fishing factory <laughs> or something. Yeah, <laughs> carrying boxes. Work, you've been working since four. That's, that's where that strength is. <laughs> All right, moving on to Jackie Chan again. So, police story two this time. Fuck yeah. This incredible stunt sequence where Jackie's on top of this bus that's driving. And first, he does a front somersault over a sign that's just going above the bus's roof. Yes. And then he dips down and lays on his black on his back flat underneath another sign that comes. And then he runs and jumps off the bus onto the awning of, like, the second story of a building with windows. It's insane. So he doesn't jump onto an awning. He jumps through a Is it glass through? window. Okay, it's through the window. Yeah, so it's a big floor to ceiling glass window that he jumps through and lands inside the building. But before the signs, even cooler. before the signs, he jumps from two other buses. So he jumps from bus to bus to bus, and then he dodges the signs, and then he jumps into the building through the glass. It's pretty cool. Unbelievable. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of jumps. We got Tom Cruise right after Jackie with Woo! Mission Impossible Woo! Fallout. This is the famous one where he broke his ankle, an incredible jump, and he's running across rooftops. And this time he runs from one rooftop and jumps across the alley onto another rooftop. He reaches and grabs a hold of the awning, but as he does, he breaks his ankle, as we all know. But being Tom Cruise, he still climbs to his feet, probably in excruciating pain, and continues running off frame. It just insane moment. Insane moment. Insane. Let's get to, let's do one more, then we'll one go more. to our intermission, all right? So let's do Atomic Blonde, specifically the staircase sequence and fight where uh, Charlize Theron did a bunch of her own stunts, but she also had a terrific stunt double and stunt performer, Monique Ganderton, who will also be in this list later on in the episode, who did a bunch of this work as well. And the staircase fight is intense because they're fighting on the staircase as well as throwing people down the stairs, lots of stair falls, lots happening, lots of long takes and long shots in this in this sequence Made as well. by David Leach. David Leach directed this, who's, who will be on this list as a performer too later on. But um, David Leach just did bullet trains coming out with the fall guy. Keanu Reeves former stunt double as well as Chad Sahelski, they made John Wick, so just a legend in the stunt world directing this movie, which is a really solid movie, great action, lots of fun if you've ever seen it, very cool 80s vibe, but this sequence is epic. Fantastic moment. Fantastic. All right, let's move into our uh, intermission. Yeah, I need, I need a little break, you know, yeah. I'm getting overwhelmed by these incredible performances. But the, the next stunts. 50 are going to be insane. They're about to get crazier. But before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost Podcast is to become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Why would you want to become a patron? Because you support us. It helps us do this show full time. We can't do it without the support of everyone on Patreon. Plus, you get perks like access to the ad free version of every episode, which you can link to your Spotify and listen ad free on Spotify and Patreon. You also get access to our Discord. We built an incredible film community on there. We like to do watch parties at least once once a month on there, plus chatting with you and just chatting with all the other movie lovers that follow the show and listen to us regularly. Plus video messages, private watch parties, custom episodes. You can pick a topic and we'll do an episode just for you. 
Patreon is essential to the show and our success going forward. We can't do it without you. Thank you to all of our patrons. You can also leave those five-star ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. This helps us get seen by new listeners and rank and chart better and better every month on the podcast charts. It's a legit thing that you need for people to see your account and be like, oh, they have almost 2,000 ratings on Apple. I think I'll listen to that show versus oh, yeah. if you didn't have that many. It's it's really good for new people finding your show and giving you a shot at listening. I'll also get a tattoo at 5,000 Apple ratings of Anthony's Choice <laughs> somewhere on my body. Hopefully it's not that lame. And also another great way to support the show, just share us. Word of mouth is the best way to help a podcast grow. Spreading the word, sharing us, helps us more than anything. So thank you so much to everyone who supports us. This episode, of course, is sponsored by our friends at MoviePosters.com, the number one place to get your posters online today. Be sure to use our promo code RAIDERS10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10 off your order right now. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their poster library, as well as all sorts of sizes, framing, and even backlighting for your poster needs. If you're a fan of action movies, like all the movies we're talking about in this episode, be sure to go to MoviePosters.com. They have a ton in their library to choose from. They're great quality, super incredible prints, great prices. And if you want to get 10% off, go to MoviePosters.com and use our promo code RAIDERS10 right now. All right, let's get into our intermission and begin with the movie quote competition. Are you ready? Ready. Dodge this. <laughs> Matrix. Yeah, that's an easy one. Oh, yeah. All right, I have one. My father taught me many things here. He taught me in this room. He taught me keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Can you say it one more time? My father taught me many things here. He taught me in this room. Godfather Part 2. There you go. Nice. Got it. Couldn't not get that. I'd be ashamed of myself. I was almost ashamed of you. <laughs> he almost disowned me. <laughs> It's a good quote. Guess this movie release here, Anthony. Tomorrow never dies. 1990. No, no, no. Yeah, wait. 1999. 97. 97, damn it. I thought GoldenEye was 97 for some reason. No, GoldenEye, I think, is. 95. Yeah, like some mid 90s, early yeah. 90s. What year did The Godfather Part 2 come out? 1970. Is it? Because he did Godfather Part 1, 72. The conversation was, was that 74? And then Godfather Part 2, was was it 1976 or was that 1974? I, I think it was 1974. Correct. Yeah. Conversation nice was 73, right? Yeah. Yeah. Squeeze that out. Oh, no. Did, or did the conversation come out the same year as one of those? Let me see. Conversation might have come out in 1974. I think it came out the same year as Godfather. Yep, 1974. He was the double nominated Best Picture. That's why I got forgotten. That Jesus, movie. has anyone ever done that before? I'm not sure. Two of your movies nominated the same year for Best Picture? It's pretty bonkers. That's insane. Fucking crazy. I think it's one of the reasons why people have forgotten about the conversation or not really heard of it. Because the Godfather Part Two came out the same year. Yeah. Also, it's not like a movie that... I think modern audiences would love. I think it's brilliant. It's fantastic. It really is. Yeah. All right, Anthony, I have a great pop quiz question for you. Let's hear it, man. What movie holds the most... What movie holds the record for the most extras ever used? Most extras ever used. Um, I'm going to go with Cleopatra. Decent guest. Decent guest. <laughs> Decent guest. <laughs> yeah. So, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> What's what is it? Gandhi. Oh, nice. Damn. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Attenborough, the director, ensured that the scene would be filmed on the 33rd anniversary of Gandhi's assassination. So this was the funeral scene, and assembled just under 95,000 contracted performers as extras. And then Columbia Pictures made an announcement about the filming, and were able to summon an additional 200,000 volunteer performers. 11 camera crews were utilized, over 20,000 feet of footage and film was captured, and while this is more rough footage than the film itself, they have to cut it down the rough cuts, and this was the scene in movie history with the most extras ever at just under 300,000 extras for one scene. What the f Jesus Christ. 
Um, Cleopatra is 20,000 extras in one scene, but that's nowhere near that. Gandhi. Imagine getting 300,000 people for a scene, for a movie. That's like more than any stadium can fit. Yeah. You're going to feed all those people. No, you don't. I guess not. It's no, not. Just come. <laughs> a different country. I, I doubt they fed them all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Wow. That's wild. The contracted ones probably you have to feed them, the 95,000 performers, but the 200,000 mm-hmm. volunteer performers, I doubt they had to feed them or anything. Yeah, you're right. Voluntary, yeah. Crazy. But Cleopatra's 20,000 actual extras that they all have to feed. Woo! That's an expensive day. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. They all ate rice. <laughs> here's your handful of rice for the day. <laughs> rice. All right, here's my quiz question. It's another Godfather Part 2 question. Let's see if I can stump you with this one. What is the name of Vito Corleone's olive oil business? It's on the cans. Oh my god, that's such a good question. What is the name of the olive oil business? Starts with a C. What do you think? I'm trying to remember the... the, It does not start with a C. Yeah, it starts with a V. Does not start with a V. Start with a P. Does not start with a P. <laughs> <laughs> it's one word. I can give you a hint of how he named it. Sure. It, it was the name of his, his his best friend growing up. Oh my god, I can't. Rem- um, it's a good one, huh? That's a great fucking question. <laughs> it's okay if you want to just give up, man. Starts with an A. No, I don't know. Jenko. Bitch. G E N C O. Jenko. Good fucking question, bro. <laughs> Good fucking question. All right. Do we have any haters or unsubscribes this week, Anthony? Oh, of course we do. Let me uh, pull these bad boys up. All right. We got. <clears throat> One second. Okay, got it. Cole Delworth, in your recent A24 movie draft, you spend a full 10 minutes discussing the Twilight Saga, <laughs> and yet you never mention one of A24's best movies, The Green Room, unsubscribed. We brought it up, but we decided not to take it. Yeah, we, uh, no one drafted That's it. That's true. I, but I sat there silent because I have not seen all the Twilight movies, so I was just watching the three of them chat, Blake and Garrett and Anthony. <laughs> Zach Lee, he wrote, just listened to Letterbox 43, and I'm ashamed to have watched more movies than the two movie podcasters this year. Hey! I'm at 77. Unsubscribed. I was in England for a month. Give me a break. That was last month. A whole month. Oh, wait, actually, no, it's yeah. It's only that's April, excuse. man. That's a good excuse. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't watch a movie for like six weeks, five weeks. <laughs> All right, Dylan White, first time subscriber here. Green Room not drafted in 824. I know. James Potter and Raiders of the Lost podcast must have this at a five star rating. Unsubscribed. I have it at a four and a half star rating. I love Green Room too. We I love- just I didn't think people really knew about that movie. I didn't draft it because it actually has a very low rating on Letterbox of a three point four. That's insanely low. Yeah, that's absurd. That's why I didn't draft it. All right, then we have uh, Yanni Yena wrote, "You guys look the same now with glasses on. Get better eyesight." Unsubscribed. <laughs> the one episode I wear glasses. <laughs> At least mine are tinted. Sean Baker directed Florida Project Anthony, not Sean Durkin. Unsubscribe from, oh, man. <laughs> from Nick. <laughs> Thank you for the correction, Nick. Also, he said to clarify, I'm only unsubscribing to Anthony. I'm still subscribed to James. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ra E wrote, no talk to me in A24 is crazy. Maybe the most original horror of this decade. Unsubscribed, even though I've just subbed. Liking the content, boys. Keep it up. Respect from the UK. Yeah, we missed out some of the, on some of the new releases on our list. <laughs> Kevin Paul just wrote a joke. Wait, no, I, I wasn't supposed to name him, but it's too late now. <laughs> Kev to the P wrote, Was there ever a draft episode where James won? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell him I said that. I don't think I've won a draft yet. <laughs> oh my God, it's embarrassing. You'll get there one day, man. <laughs> You'll get there one day. <laughs> Um, Sneaky XD wrote No Marcel Unsubscribed Sorry Sorry Sorry. Almost I really love Marcel The shell with shoes on Yeah it's a great It's a great little movie (laughs) Alright that's it For our unsubscribes This week They were funny We have a great Five star written review On Apple Podcasts From Jules 12012 They're the best guys around He was the best guy around What What about about the the murder murder? What murder (laughs) (laughs) That's my favorite Video meme I think (laughs) 
I saw one for that for Paul Atreides. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> what murder? It was like the Fremen. Like, what murder? <laughs> they blew those guys' eyes. <laughs> he was the best guy around. I've been listening for years now. Whenever I watch a movie they have covered, I feel like a genius spewing all the facts to my friends. Also, when I, re- when I reference this podcast, I just say my boys because the guys really feel like friends once I hit play. Aww. Thanks to them for the laughs and knowledge on everything film. Hope they do well with all future projects. Hopefully they come up and do a live show in the PNW or I'll unsubscribe. Nice. Thank you, Thanks Jules. Thanks for that review. So much for that sweet review. We loved it. Aww. I feel so warm inside. What does the PNW stand for? I have no idea. Let me look that up. PNW, PNW. location. Is that like Canada? Is it Pacific Northwest? Pacific Northwest. Got oh, it. Cool. So, Portland show, Seattle. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, or even it can count as uh, like uh, Canada, like British Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, PNW. Maybe we'll do. Washington. I learned something new today. PNW. PNW. All right, Jules. Thank you so much for that lesson on geography. We my streaming re- it. my streaming recommendation for this episode is going to be since Monkey Man's coming out or just came out last week in theaters can't recommend it enough I recommend also watching The Green Knight from A24 which is on Max starring Dev Patel excellent film great pick thanks I picked The Zone of Interest the best foreign language winner for the Oscar this year from Jonathan Glazer it's now on Max check it out James, check it out. Check it out. All right, let's get back into our episode of the best stunts in cinema history. You've done 50 already. And I'm sure you thought they were pretty epic, and they are all great and epic. But this is the top 50 now. Going to the big guns. Top 50. First, First up, up is... Well, you did it last week. You did Atomic Blonde. I've never seen Three Ages, though. I need you to explain that. Okay. Temple of Doom, the, Indian, the Indiana Jones film, and specifically... The rope bridge collapse that has men on it. This is the scene where he's running across the bridge. His shirt's half ripped open. <laughs> what does it have to do with the stunt? Just, I just want to set the scene and set the what stage. Does it have to do with the stunt? That Harrison Ford's a golden god in this movie. And he's just sweating profusely with his half torn open shirt. And the rope bridge is cut from one end. And they have to hang on as the bridge swings. Yeah. And then Harrison, obviously, Indiana survives, climbs up, and. Yeah. Is safe, but they it's built awesome this huge, stunt. huge stone wall for it. It's really great, huge, huge stunt piece, set piece. It's massive. It's cool. <laughs> this shirt ripped open. Just set in the scene. <laughs> Had to set this sweaty, come on. Mes- muscles bulging. It's Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. It's it like prime. Come on, Harrison Ford in 1988. Like <laughs> you kidding? Come on, get out of town, man. Whatever year this movie came out. <laughs> All right, next up, we have yet another Buster Keaton stump in Buster Keaton stunt. In three ages, this is where Buster jumped from from one roof to the next. Um, he doesn't make it, but instead he he grabs a pipe uh, alongside the wall of the building, and this is he he so he stands on a wooden plank because the jump was too far, and so this was able to get him closer to the next building, and then he he jumped across the entire distance and grabbed the pipe to hold on to and dangled from the pipe, and then the pipe fell down a little bit and he just like dropped down a little bit more. It's great. There's also another incredible, while we're on Buster Keaton, there's this great one where there's a a train tracks, like, pole. You know how they go up and down, that kind of pole that stops traffic. Mm -hmm. There's one where he's on a building, and the train tracks pole is upwards, and then he, he goes from the building and climbs onto the pole, and it drops down with him on it, and then he lands inside of a car that drives away. That's really cool. I've seen that one, yeah, I've seen that one. Really epic. Let's get into another Chris Nolan film. However, not a Batman movie. We're going to talk about Tenet, which has an incredible repelling stunt. So we have the scene where Neil and protagonists are trying to break into that building to get to the arms dealer who they, ha- they haven't met yet and in India. And they repel upwards 130 feet, which was done using high-speed winches. And then they jump down 240 feet on a, on a 240-foot winch. Both were done with stunt performers doing the jumps themselves. No CGI, obviously. It's a Christopher Nolan film. But they don't have to edit out the wires here because it's part of the sh- yeah. part of the scene. And it was performed by Daniel Graham and Kyle McLean. Have you ever bungee jumped? Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Next up, we have a Jackie Chan film, Police Story. One of his biggest hits. And so this is during the, the huge shootout sequence inside of that village. 
And we're talking particularly about the car crashing through the village. So it's this hillside village with a bunch of uh, homes and shacks built from scrap parts and pieces. And so one of the henchmen takes a car and drives it down the hill through all of the shacks and, and houses and buildings, crashing through them all, tearing them in pieces. It's massive. It's huge. There's so much carnage and destruction. Uh, Michael Bay ripped it off. I will say he, he used that in one of the Transformers movies. Um, and also the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk used that sequence too. But this is the original, and it's really fantastic to behold. So cool. Let's get into something else that's epic. We're going to talk about the forest fight scene in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, we tried not to do that many fight scenes because we just want to do overall stunt sequences or, or just major stunts. But because the wire work and the choreography in this scene is so incredible, in the movie in general, but this, this scene in, in particular is just death-defying, so well done, so well executed, incredible stunt rigging and stunt work and stunt performing. It's just a sensational fight. It just... You never seen anything like it before, especially if you saw this movie in a theater. But it, it was really incredible, and this is a sensational scene. Great yeah. stunts, yeah, incredible. All right, next up we have a film from 2024. Ooh, Dune Part Two, and we're talking about the Sand Dune Collapse. And this is when Paul is about to ride his sandworm for the first time. His 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 big sandworm, the and, biggest Shai Halud ever seen. And he's and they actually did perform the stunt for real. So uh, they built an artificial sand dune. And inside of the sand dune were three huge cylinders, which were strapped to massive trucks. And then as the stuntman ran across the top of the sand dune, one by one, each truck drove away, pulling the cylinders out from underneath the sand dune and collapsing the sand dune and allowing the stunt performer to run and fall into uh, the collapsed sand. So it's a great moment. No CGI involved except for the sand, obviously, except for the worm, obviously, but... The stunt performer really did this amazing stunt. Lawrence Hideyoshi was Timmy's stunt double on the film in this scene in particular. Lorenz? Lorenz Hideyoshi. Really, really incredible stuff. It's, it's epic. That scene took three months in overall over the course of several shoots to finish and complete the whole sandworm riding scene. Three months to make that scene. Paid off. Epic. Epic stuff. Next up, we have another John Wick 4 stunt, specifically the stair fall in the third act of the film, which was so brilliant and harkens back to great scenes in, in silent film stunts like Buster Keaton infusing a lot of great comedy and absurdism and realism in the film. And this is where John Wick keeps, he's trying to make the top of the stairs, but he keeps falling backwards and backwards and backwards until you think he's going to make it to the tippy top, which he does. Then he gets kicked and falls all the way down those stairs again. This was performed again by his stunt double, Vincent Boyan, who is one of Keanu's main doubles and is just a great stunt guy. And if he can handle the escalator fall, I'm sure... This was, I mean, if you can do this, this elevator's fall, escalator fall is probably a piece of cake. It was really on, good comedy, too. Yeah, it, it's a funny scene. It's epic. Yeah. It, the, the theater loved this scene. Very really funny. Did. All so right. A lot of steps. Next up, we have our first stunt from a Jason Bourne movie, which has some really iconic ones. And this stunt is in Bourne Supremacy. And this is during the finale climactic car chase between Jason Bourne and Carl Urban's character. I can't remember the name of him. And so Carl Steven, Steven, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve is driving a G wagon. It's not Steven <laughs> and born is taken over a taxi cab. And so they've been shooting each other. They've been crashing into each other. And first of all, like they wreck a ton of cars behind them in the background. It's insane. So many cars just bashing into each other. But the big, big moment of this chart of this chase is after shooting out his tires and blowing them out. Jason gets the, the edge on the G-Wagon and turns it into a T-bone fashion. And then he drives, the, he drives it and T-bones it into a wall within the tunnel. And just fucking just decimates it. It's insane. Unbelievable stunt. Super dangerous. But really, it looks fantastic. And it was just such a, a show-stopping scene in the movie. Let's do another car stunt. Specifically with Zoe Bell in the film Death Proof. Directed by Quentin Tarantino. Where third act of the film her character is on the hood of the car or the bonnet of the car if you're in the uk and zoe bell did this for real for what feels like a five minute chase and she's getting hit by stuntman mike's hitting their car ramming the car with his mm -hmm. and it's, just, it's badass it's epic zoe bell's a legend and they were going fast pretty fast tarantino said that they were they intentionally went as fast as they could yeah all right next up we have another jackie chan movie 
Police Story 3, the third film in the action franchise, Super Cop. However, this stunt, <laughs> <laughs> this stunt involves Michelle Yeoh, uh, the, Ch- the Chinese legend who is a great stunt performer and martial artist in her right. We were just talking about Crouching Tiger. And so in Super Cop, it's Michelle Yeoh actually for real drove a motorcycle onto a train, onto a moving train. And so in the scene, she's trying to get onto the train. And she she jumps a small distance into the moving train. She did it for real. And there's like in the shot, like she almost like didn't make it. Like it just the motorcycle like bumped its back tail as it was climbing onto the onto the tail of the train. It's insane. Um, and she did it for real. She did it herself, and it's an unbelievable stunt by her. Yeah, if anyone is curious about her career, you should look up her cinema and her stunts in her prime when she was, you know, when Jackie was in his prime too, but Michelle in her prime, impressive stuff. Even in that movie, she has a great stunt where she just, she's running and then sprints and then jumps in the air and lands on the motorcycle, like jumping yeah. on a horse on a saddle. Yeah. It's really cool. Plus, her stuff in Crouching Tiger is unbelievable. It man. really is. It's she's, insane. She's a legend. A legend. Let's move on to another legend who we've already talked about, Tom Cruise, specifically Mission Impossible Fallout, which is going to be on this list more and more. Specifically, the scene where the third act of the movie, where he's chasing the other helicopter, Ethan Hunt. <laughs> However, in this helicopter, Tom Cruise is piloting the helicopter and operating cameras and acting all at the same time. So, Tom Cruise, who we all know, does all of his own stunts and is a pilot, loves to fly, learn how to fly a helicopter. And then operate cameras at the same time. So the camera's mounted inside and mounted on the exterior. So he's it's a really intense sequence because he's doing some very insane maneuvers, very dangerous maneuvers, and very experienced pilots do. I'm sure some experienced pilots wouldn't even want to do. And I think he does, he does like a nose dive with the helicopter, all kinds of he stuff. Does, it's the corkscrew dive is the, what what was the most dangerous yeah, thing. So the corkscrew dive yes. as after his like gas line gets yeah. that gets shot out. And this is actually Tom Cruise piloting the helicopter and operating cameras at the same time. Insane. And acting. <laughs> How do you do all three of those at once? I don't know. Unless you're Tom Cruise. Man. With a lot of practice. Fucking insane. All right, next up we have another fire burn. This one is at number 39 on our list for being uh, a full body fire burn in The Thing, which was also, it was the biggest of its time and lasted the longest at its t- at this time in filmmaking history. Incredible sequence. Absolutely. Let's move on to another Mission Impossible film, specifically Rogue Nation, where Tom Cruise held his breath for over six minutes underwater while doing the stunt. While doing the stunts, this is where he has to uh, swap the hard drive or swap the. What is it like the some some kind of disc some kind of thing. disc or some, memory oh, card? This is a floppy disk. Floppy, he just, he has to, <laughs> so he has to he dives in. And he has to swap a floppy disk out <laughs> underwater for over six minutes. While doing stunts, while acting, holding his breath the entire time, he actually did this. He didn't not hold his breath for six minutes. We've, we've made a clip about this, and people have been, oh, he didn't hold his breath for six minutes. Yeah. He did it. He had the record for an actor doing it on camera. And then Kate Winslet beat it for Avatar 2, The Way of Water, recently for one of the scenes that she did underwater. It's an insanely impressive thing to do, to hold your breath for six minutes, which you can train yourself to do, but then doing stunts, performing, and swimming, and acting, because all of that, you're burning oxygen. Mm-hmm. Pretty intense stunt. I held my breath for 215. Whoa. Last month. Yeah. Just for fun? Just for funsies. Just for funsies. Uh, using Wim Hof breathing. So there's this, this is like a, a YouTube video he did, and he teaches you how to hold your breath, and it's, I'd never done it before. And then I just did the video, and then I did it for two, two minutes, 15 seconds, held my breath. Pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, I didn't think I could ever do that. It's really impressive, Anthony. Yeah. You really have to not. I was not moving at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's impressive about yeah. it. Is like you can train yourself to hold your breath for six minutes, but yeah. can you do that and then swim and stunt perform and yeah. act at the same time? Yeah. His heart he, his heart rate's going and he's it's insane. He's using oxygen. It's, it's unbelievable. All right, next up we have uh, a sequence from Ong Bak, which is a great Thai film starring Tony Ja, which really broke him out in a big way. This is the village chase scene. So there are two great stunts in this scene. Uh, the first one is... He runs atop the shoulders of pedestrians, which is absolutely insane. And then the second part of the stunt is he jumped. Well, it's actually a couple things he jumps through. But the most impressive one is he, he jumps through a ring of barbed wire, which is insane. Damn. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That's a very cool movie. Ong Bak, the Thai warrior. Yeah. Great film. Let's move on to Sherlock Holmes, the 2009 film directed by Guy Ritchie. Now, in this film, we have a scene in a stunt performer, 
and it's done sequence where someone gets he, he, someone does a, a fire burn and then they jump out of a window onto a horse-drawn carriage all while on fire this is performed by stuntman glenn foster again he jumps out of a window mm-hmm. onto a horse-drawn carriage while on fire it's great and it's the scene where um the villain basically takes over that secret society and and kill and that it's actually the guy's father. Yeah, so yeah. Then they, they the she scene. shoots the gun yeah. and it ignites his body. Yeah. And obviously if you've seen the movie, you know why that happens. Yeah. And they think it's they think it's, you know, his powers, yeah. but it's not It's um, a great moment. Yeah, then he runs out of the window and just it, someone actually did that. It looks so it's good. Insane. I I honestly I didn't know that was for real yeah, until neither. just now. Me neither. Until just now. All right, next up. And no, can you imagine pinpointing your landing on a horse drawn carriage while on fire? It's crazy. And jump. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's, it's crazy. I love stunt people. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have at number 35 from Raiders of the Lost Ark during the finale climax chase scene. We have when Indiana Jones climbs from underneath the car- undercarriage of the truck and he climbs up onto the hood. At first, he was holding onto the rope, which was dragging him on the ground, pulled himself underneath the car- undercarriage and climbed across the undercarriage, then climbs up the front face of the truck onto the hood stunt man it's just like one of the best stunt performances ever this moment in this sequence it was a showstopper even for that movie and such a memorable part of the indie franchise which is iconic for its stunt work incredible incredible scene moving on to police story jackie chan again yeah. specifically the bus scene where he's chasing down a double decker bus he has an umbrella right Yes. And so he uses an umbrella to jump and dive and catch a hold of the bus, which drags him for several feet. And then he eventually climbs up on the side of it, being dragged more until he's on the roof of it eventually. But it's just crazy. He's just dangling from the back, the side, and top of a double decker bus that's speeding and turning it crazily with an umbrella. Unreal. An umbrella. An umbrella. And just that, that dive to get the bus, he just like full on spreads out and reaches for it and just. Barely clasps the hand of the umbrella onto the onto the bus. So epic. It's crazy. All right, next up. I'm sure you've been waiting for this movie. At number 33, we have Mad Max Fury Road. I mean, we can't do the every we can't do the whole movie. This whole movie is just a huge, giant, impressive stunt sequence. But obviously, the most iconic stunt in this film is the pole cats. And this is when the stuntmen are on top of the giant poles made to move like metronomes. With two men on the bottom to assist the movement of the poles with a stuntman on top. The poles move, were moving on cars that chased the tanker. All of the performers were then able to transfer from the top of their pole to the tanker. Or also pull people from other cars onto their top of their pole. Some stunt performers were also holding weapons and props. Some of the most notable stunt performers in the scene were Sebastian Dickens, Pete Hill, Craig Morgan, Chris Patton, and Judd Wild. This was just an unbelievable display of action and this is just I, I i was absolutely floored by this i couldn't believe what i was seeing in the theater very cool next up we have the born ultimatum specifically the balcony jump this is when born is running on the rooftops and then he jumps across the balconies and smashes through a window now this rooftop chase was done without wires or anything and it ends with jumping from a rooftop into a balcony window like i said with no wires or safety cables used for the stunt doubles. It was done by David Leach. Wow, really? Who directed Atomic Blonde, uh-huh. stunt double for many people, Deadpool 2, again, Bullet Train and Fall Guy coming out. And he was killing it in stunts. And also Kai Martin was part of this stunt team of the rooftops and jumps. But it's an incredible stunt. The glass is fake and CGI, but yeah. the jump is real. And also, kudos to the cameraman, who I'm sure is probably a stunt performer. So yeah, the cameraman. I'm guessing that was Kai Martin, possibly, I'm not sure, who was on wires. And does the jump as well, but just gets caught and stopped halfway yeah. across the the alley. Yeah, so that that shot was amazing because he followed him literally. He, he followed him literally in the air and jumped right behind him. And David Leach, I, I read, said that at, at that point it was the hardest stunt he's ever done. I bet, man, you could time it and the precision and the danger involved. Like, holy shit! Yeah, it's not it's not a safe stunt to do. There's so <laughs> many ways it could go wrong, especially no wires, because then he just because then Bourne comes through. Yeah, and, and continues the chase. It's really epic. That's one of my favorite stunts ever. Yeah, me too. It's such a great part of that film, too. It's That's why I put like, it at number 32. Like, holy shit, man. All right, next up, speaking of David Leach, we have an Atomic Blonde clip. And this is the balcony jump at number 31 when Uma, when um, Charlize Theron's character jumps off a fifth-story balcony and swings down to the third floor 
crashing into the apartment door below. This stunt was filmed in two parts. The first part, the stunt double leapt from a fifth floor balcony, dropped past the fourth floor, and swung into the opening of the third floor balcony. The double held onto a practical garden hose that was attached to the wire system. CGI was used to remove these wires. And then for the second part of the stunt, the double stood on a scissor lift about 15 feet away from the balcony opening, swung over, a, swung on a rope through the opening, let go, crashed into the wall, then fell to the ground. No wires were used for that to assist in this part of the stunt. And this was performed by Bo Monique Ganderton. Insane stunt. We talked about earlier in Atomic Blonde for the stair fight. Epic stunt. It's so cool. The, the camera angle is epic too because you kind of can't film this from a bad angle, but they, they did a great job capturing the trajectory of her swinging down. It's so goddamn. Let's move on over to The Protector, a Tony Jaw film where he fights a crew of men in one take all over a building. So this is an interior. They go up. There's three, three floors to this building. They built this interior. And it's all done in one real take. And he's, he fights about, I would say, 25 people. And they're breaking through walls. They're bashing things on him. He's kicking them. He's jumping over things. He's climbing from floor to floor. There's all sorts of effects and great stunt work. It's an incredible piece of action cinema. Um, they couldn't go quite as fast as normal just because they had to make sure everything was right because it's a, about a seven-minute take, I would say. But, man, it is such a sight to behold. And they it was just everything was done to the exacting detail, and it worked out so well. Incredible stunt sequence. Very cool. Moving on next to... Actually, it's your turn. Cliffhanger, a Sylvester Stallone movie at number 29, actually has some unbelievable stunts. And the big daddy of all the stunts they did was they transported one man from one plane to another plane with a rope. So what they did was there are two planes in the air flying, and they did this for real. This stunt... Uh, I believe it might still be the most expensive stunt ever done. It cost them $1 million in like 1985 to make. And so they they tied, a, they tethered a, a rope from one plane to the other. And this guy went onto the rope and then he, he crawled across and slid across the rope and, and climbed into the other plane door. Done for real. It's incredible. It's insane. Don't the, they change altitude too, the planes, yeah. right? Yeah. It's um, it's un stopped like halfway. It's insane. Fucking love that movie. Insane. What a banger. Let's do John Wick 4 again, everybody. We have specifically the, the car chase in Paris, but more specifically at the Arc de Triomphe, which is great because we went to a, a Q&A and saw some behind the scenes of this movie and how they filmed it. And they were talking about um, how they had all these cars, practically. a lot. Some of them were CGI, but a lot of them were there at the Arc. And John Wick's walking and running through in between these cars. He's driving in between these cars. And they had specific lanes of which direction you could go in, but these cars... Color-coordinated the lanes. Yeah, the stunt yeah. performers and stunt drivers all had to stay in, stay in their lane at the specific times. It's really cool. But also, the scene, the shot where... John driving, being driven by Keanu as as John Wick in this part, where he has the door open. The door's been kicked off, uh, knocked off, right? Yeah. And so he's just shooting his gun while doing a donut around the Arc de Triomphe. It's just yeah. so badass. It, it's one of the coolest shots of the movie for it's sure. It's a great moment. I love it. That's that's an incredible sequence. But it's a really complicated sequence to do, and it, yeah. I think it deserves to be on this list for sure. All right, next up we have a William Friedkin film with Sorcerer at number 27. Unbelievable movie. If you haven't seen it, we highly recommend checking it out. And in this film, uh, a, a pair of trucks are being driven across the jungle, and they all have highly explosive um, nitroglycerin in their back trunks. And what they did was they... You have four barrels of nitroglycerin, and you're firing a gun at a van, and your imaginary <laughs> friend. <laughs> Fight Club. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Good reference. <laughs> and so... This is an incredible sequence because they're driving trucks, these massive trucks across uh, a wooden bridge on top of a high river that is flowing at a high speed of, uh, water's flowing at a high speed. And it was done for real. They built this entire rigging setup and the stuntmen drove the trucks across the bridge. And when I tell you this is one of the most insanely suspenseful scenes I've ever seen in my life, I'm not kidding. The trucks are tipping. They're nearly flipping over. The bridge is just like all over the place. And they truck, the drivers really did drive these trucks. Um, and it was all done practically. And they really did do it in the jungle. It's unbelievable. 
incredible sight to behold. All right, let's talk about another James Bond movie, but we're going to talk about Live and Let Die, the Roger Moore James Bond film. And there's an incredible crocodile run stunt in this movie where James Bond basically is put on this, he's in this alligator farm. The villains put him on this little <laughs> rock in the middle of this little pond, and it's full of crocodiles. And they're like, all right, good luck, James. And they go away, <laughs> and James is going to get eaten by crocodiles. And so then what James does after the crocodiles start to come on that little rock that he's standing on, he looks to his side, and there's a row of crocodiles that look like they're in a bridge formation. It's obviously a play on, you see it in cartoons yeah. a lot, like running on top of crocodiles' backs because they're just chilling there. They look like steps or on a path. And so the stunt performer, Ross Kanaga, actually ran across these crocodiles and they did several takes, and I believe they they got bit on one of the takes and got over a hundred stitches in in one of his areas on the bike. Jesus Christ! And they actually did this, and what what they did is they weighed down the arms and legs of the crocodiles. You could not do this today. No, oh, yeah, you, Peter would not let you do this today, and it's obviously animal abuse to to do this. But they weighted down the arms and legs of the crocodiles that were in their formation uh -huh. so that they couldn't go up and grab them. But their jaws were still open. And so as he runs across the backs of these crocodiles, for real, they all lift their arm, their mouths up to try to bite whatever's on top of them. And he makes yeah. it across in, in one of the takes perfectly. But it's an absolutely insane stunt. This is crazy. It's freaking bonkers how they did this. Because they're really big animals, too. They're crocodiles! Yeah. They're not massive crocodiles, but they're still yeah. pretty big. You know, they're probably, I would say, about five feet long from tail to, to snout. But it's intense, and it, they did it for real several times. Damn. It's an absolute crazy, That's crazy insane. stunt. That's insane. <laughs> That's also animal abuse. It is animal abuse. And it also, if he falls, he probably loses his life. Yeah. Man. All right, moving into a film that comes out in a couple of weeks. The Fall Guy, coming out May 5th. We got to see an early screening of this, and a bunch of the stunt people involved in the film were there. It was super fun. Now, this movie celebrates stunt work and the stunt people who work behind the scenes and put their lives on the line to make our favorite moments possible. And they actually broke a Guinness Book World Record in this film for the most barrel rolls with a vehicle. Uh, performed by Logan Halliday, he rolled a car eight and a half times across a beach and it is absolutely stunning to behold. We saw this great behind the scenes video about the setup, the production of it, and then finally pulling it off. It took them two takes to get it right. And he just knocked it out of the park. It's an unbelievable moment. And we got, actually got to see him get presented with uh, the official Guinness Book of World Records certificate for most battle rules. It's very cool. Yeah. It's an awesome stunt. And it's an awesome movie. We can't wait for you guys to check it out. And since we're celebrating stunt people in this episode... We are officially endorsing that film as fucking epic. Yeah. So much fun. Moving on next to Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, the opening of that film, Ethan, a.k.a. Tom Cruise, who basically is Ethan Hunt, <laughs> hangs on the side of a plane that takes off and goes a thousand feet in the air while he's hanging on the side of it on an Airbus 400. He's obviously wired in. He's wearing a harness, cabled in. He's attached to it but he's still on the side of a plane that's going 1,000 feet in the air, which is pretty dangerous because if some sort of debris, they fly past, hits him, it's going to go through his skull and kill him. <laughs> um, so it's not a super safe... It's, I mean, it's safe, but also insanely dangerous. It's very controlled, but very dangerous. Yes. Yeah. The other door! <laughs> Such a good scene. He wore glass contacts. Yeah, so in case any debris, it wouldn't go through his head, right? Yeah. It <laughs> would tear through his eyeball. <laughs> All right, next up we have another William Friedkin film, which I'm. this is just great. To Live and Die in L.A. Now, there's a great car chase with William Peterson. However, it's not the chase that's the great moment. It's this moment where during the chase, he drives on the wrong side of the freeway. And so this stunt, this this was just absolutely floored me. I was, told, I was so blown away when I saw this movie for the first time. I couldn't believe they actually did this. But it's just William Friedkin for you. So he had a car chase take place on the wrong side of the road on a five-lane freeway, and cars are crashing into each other. They're getting mangled. It's absolutely insane and bonkers. It's all done for real. They photographed every bit of this. And, man, the stunt driving in this sequence is insane. And I just, I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I watched this moment. It's unbelievable. 
And it's not like the greatest car chase ever, but it's this moment of driving on the wrong side of the highway that was just in fucking incredible. Unbelievable. Hell yeah. Let's move on to another Jackie Chan movie. Let's talk about First Strike. Now, in this film, Jackie is on a snowboard going after a helicopter. And so Jackie jumps a snowboard off of a cliff and grabs on to the bottom leg of a helicopter. It's epic. It's in, it's fucking insane. It is for real. But on top of that, so the helicopter, it wasn't just like chilling, waiting for him. The helicopter actually ascended and rose as he was approaching the cliffside. So if they timed it wrong, or like if something happened with the helicopter and they didn't rise fast enough, he would have gotten, he would have flown right into the propellers. That's, it's so unbelievable. It's fucking insane what he did. I can't believe it. All right, next up, we have another Mission Impossible stunt. We have the Burj Khalifa climb from Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is when uh, Tom Cruise, a.k.a. Ethan Hunt, same person, <laughs> climbs across the uh, Burj Khalifa. I just Khalifa. made that joke. I know. I'm just uh, compounding on it. No, it's not working, man. I'm just, it was just a great joke, it's so not I wanted to say it again. It's not working for me. It sounds I, like didn't, I didn't say this is my joke it sounds that like I came you're up trying with. to steal my joke. I didn't say, hey, here's this funny joke I came up with nobody's ever said before. It's, it's, that's, that was the tone you had. <laughs> Shut up. That was your tone, Shut Anthony. up. This is uh, obviously Tom Cruise scaling the Burj Khalifa, at the time the tallest building in the world. Uh, it's just an iconic moment. It's so cool. And also rappelling down, running down. Uh, swinging around <laughs> the building, we should actually have this so higher. Sick. <laughs> so sick. It's an unbelievable stunt. Unbelievable. All right, let's do next Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Is this horses versus tanks? Yeah, the, the sequence. Okay, the sequence of the horses versus tanks. It's really epic, and it's, it's a lot of great stunt work going on, obviously being uh, driven to the side of the cliff, hanging on by the cannon that's been busted open, then obviously leading to the end of the tank falling off the cliff mm -hmm. and Indy jumping off of it to safety as well as getting his father and their friend out of the tank and off it as well. So really cool sequence. Jumping from horse to tank is insane. Just unbelievable stuff in that sequence. It's unreal. Next up, we have Steamboat Bill Jr. Jr. This is the Buster Keaton housefall stunt, which is incredible. So his character is standing in front of this house in the front face of the house falls forwards and goes right through him but his body goes through a window an open window of the face of the house so he safely doesn't get injured but it's an absolutely insane stunt to do an entire front of a house falling forwards on top of buster keaton but he safely makes it through a window by standing completely still in a very precise spot this took insane nerves to do as well as rumors are they nailed his shoes into the ground so he wouldn't be enticed to move. Oh. That's what the rumor is. I'm not sure if it's completely true, but I would probably want that as well. But just to stand there still while a house is falling on top of you is insane. Yeah. And this is actually his second version of it. He did a smaller version with a much smaller wall, and I think he was like, I could go bigger. And so they did an actual entire fucking house. That's crazy. It's wild. Another busted Buster Keaton film at number 18 with Cops. In this film... This is where Buster Keaton is being chased by an entire group of cops through an alleyway. He escapes them and reaches the middle of a street with traffic driving by. And I'm sure many of you have seen this image of a car speeding by Buster Keaton. He reaches out his hand, grabs the, the metal beam in the back of the car, and the car pulls him away. This was done completely practical. Um, no wires. No rigging, nothing. This is literally just Buster Keaton grabbing a car. It's not like going like 10 miles per hour. It's going pretty damn fast. And it, it whiffs him off away. And this is what I'm talking about, like the brute strength of this guy to be able to do that. Like, unbelievable. It's so cool. It's very incredible. And it's just so funny. It's very impressive. It's so funny. Let's get into another Christopher Nolan film. This time, Inception. Talking about the hallway fight scene, which is breathtaking. Now... Joseph Gordon-Levitt is the main actor in this sequence, and he's performing the scene with performers Andy Bradshaw, Bradshaw, Rick English, Marvin Stewart Campbell, and Richard Wu. And I, I think it, I remember seeing Christopher Nolan say it took about three weeks to film this one fight sequence of just the spinning hallway because obviously the kick's happening, the van's rolling down the hill, so the gravity's changing constantly inside the dream, inside the dream. 
and J Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character Eames is trying to drop everybody, but he's being chased by the the cronies of the mind, the fence systems inside Killian Murphy's character. Now, this set, two of uh, let's see, two of these sets were built. They were 110 feet long. They were centrifuges mm -hmm. built for this fight. One set was vertical and the other was horizontal. The vertical set was used for a descender fall. The horizontal set was used for the other part of the fight. A tracking ratchet was also used. Both stuntmen were fighting without wires for most of the scene. So incredible stunt work of before the wire rigs are utilized yeah. of just going with the gravity flow and changes of the spinning hallway, jumping and falling from ceiling to floor to, to wall. And then fighting along those sets like that, absolutely, incre absolutely incredible work. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt did a great job as well doing a lot of the work himself. But then these other stunt performers coming in yeah. and doing the, the really dangerous stuff was really incredible. Yeah, it's that fall, that guy who falls through the entire hallway is unbelievable. And JGL did, the like, I think everything except for one shot, if I remember correctly. And he trained for six weeks for the sequence. Quite a bit of yeah, wire work. He did for a great job. Yeah. And next up, we have the actual corkscrew dive from Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, so Tom Cruise trained for, um, six weeks doing this and he would fly 60, he would train for 68 hours every day and he did this for real. So he, he spent three, three months, I'm sorry, training at Airbus's helicopter school in Texas so he could fly the helicopter himself. And they did three, it, it was 68 hours per day training for this helicopter stunt. And this is the corkscrew dive bomb that they, that he pulls into the valley and then he has to correct its course and, and then ascend again. And he did this, like he, like James said, well, also operating, acting, cameras. operating the cameras. Bonkers, man. Let's move on to number 15. We have the Matrix reloaded the motorcycle chase on the highway. Now, Carrie Ann Moss did a decent amount of driving in this on the motorcycle. However, Debbie Evans stepped in for the dangerous stuff, weaving through the crowded freeway, which is going in the opposite side of traffic evading multiple cars and a semi truck while carrying a passenger passenger on the back of the motorcycle and riding through traffic head on to escape what an epic scene they built i think a mile of highway to shoot this scene holy shit yeah yeah they built their own freeway for it incredible all right next up we have at number 14 golden eye and this is the bungee jump off of the Hoover Dam. It's not, Done. It's not the Hoover. It's the Contra Dam. Contra Dam. The Contra Dam. <laughs> Sorry. I just think whenever <laughs> I think of dam, I think of the Hoover Dam. It's not the only dam in the world, bro. Yeah. So this is actually done by a real stunt performer, Wayne Michaels. So he had two weeks to prepare. And so he bungee jumped 220 meters down. And when he reached the bottom, he also had to pull out a gun, which he fired and shot, which was like a... Uh, something a like grip a wire hook. yeah a grip hook wire uh, so, so we could go from there but it was done for real it's an incredible stunt and man they shot the hell out of that it's so cool at the time it was record breaking of bungee jump off of a solid structure wow so 220 meters which is probably a little over 600 feet mm. insane. insane jinx you owe me coke. coke fuck you <laughs> <laughs> got him Number 13, Dark Knight Rises, we have the plane hijacking. Yes. Where four stuntmen jump out of a plane and are towed behind while they try to board another plane. This is the Bane sequence, his escape from that plane. There is no CGI in this film because it's a Christopher Nolan film at all with this jump. And then grabbing, no CGI involved with the jump, grabbing the second plane or standing on the side of the other plane. The stunt performers in the scene are David Garrick, Neil Finnegan, Steve Park, and Dave Ruffle. Great it's sequence. Incredible. So good. In IMAX. Whew. Crashing this plane. Great job. Was getting caught part of your plan? Of course. We had to find out what you what he told you about us. What's next in your master plan? Crashing this plane. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on to number 12, Police Story 3, Super Cop, once again with Jackie Chan. So in this sequence, Jackie Chan jumps from the roof of a building onto a helicopter ladder. And so there's, a, there's a dangling ladder from the helicopter with the enemies in it. And he jumps, he really did this, he jumped from a building onto the rope bridge, uh, it's a rope ladder. And then... The helicopter flew him across the city while he's hanging. 
And then in Jackie Chan fashion, he's just like, oh, hanging on, like, for dear life, <laughs> just being crazy. It's unbelievable. They flew him all over the city. Uh, he, wasn't ro- he wasn't wired in. He was just hanging on to that for real. Insane. Well, well also, The Matrix is that great helicopter yeah. hanging stunt that we probably yes. should have put on this list, which I'm assuming was probably a Chad, reference. St- Chad yeah. Stahelski uh, hanging on with one hand. No, it was Morpheus hanging. No, I mean, but Chad Stahelski on the bottom of the ladder. Because he's hanging on to Morpheus's arm. Yeah. So they're both hanging from the helicopter. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both of them. Yes. Two guys. The both of them. Two two for one right two. there. Two of them. So let's just put that on the list right now. Yeah, it's a, on the list. As an appendage to number 12. 12A, 12B, 12B is the Matrix helicopter hanging stunt as well. <laughs> hanging outside of uh, Australia. Let's move on to Raiders of the Lost Ark. The opening scene is so iconic. As Indiana Jones escapes from the temple, he is met with lots of booby traps, which he avoided on his way inside the temple. He dodges them all, but the final one is that giant rolling boulder, the giant stone, coming crashing down that ramp for Indiana Jones to crush him and flatten him like a pancake. Harrison Ford did the stunt himself. And it was a real stone. <laughs> it was no, it wasn't, but it was it was also it might not maybe you're like, oh, it's not that dangerous. It's probably like paper mache. It was eleven foot tall and it's 30- probably very heavy. Let me get to it. Let me it was, get it to prob- it. It was 11 feet tall and 300 pounds. Mm-hmm. So it could have hurt him pretty bad. That would have hurt. Could yeah. have done some damage. And he even trips in, this, in the shot. Yeah, he's terrible. He, ter- he yeah, trips he, to his knee. Yeah. He gets back up. But Harrison Ford really did the stunt. And it's actually a lot more dangerous than it looks. I bet. I bet. And it's just iconic. Uh, of course. It has to be up here for it's sure. Iconic. Because of that. All right. Now we're heading into the top 10 list of the best stunts of all time. The top 10, everyone. First up, we have a John Ford movie all the way back in 1948 with Stagecoach. This is an incredible Western. And in this stunt, we have the horse jump. So one of the characters. So what's happening, there's this huge chase with a bunch of horses, a bunch of carriages. And then the stunt performer, he jumps from horse to horse to horse. As they're fucking literally galloping. Like they are sprinting. And he's not wired in. He's got nothing. He's just... He just climbs onto a horse while it's running, and then he jumps onto the horse ahead of it. And then he, next, he, then he settles himself again, and he jumps onto the horse ahead of that one. It's fucking unbelievable. It's one of the most impressive, dangerous stunts I've ever seen performed in my entire life. Definitely check it out online. You can just watch it on YouTube, the stagecoach horse jumping scene. Let's get back into Mission Impossible Fallout. Because this movie just has some of the greatest stunts ever. <laughs> yeah, it does. And specifically the scene when the helicopter is taking off from the ground and Ethan Hunt's running after it. And what's he do? He jumps on the, the package, the payload, and starts to climb up that wire. So Tom Cruise obviously did this for real. He's wired in to the helicopter, a safety wire and harness. However, he did run to the helicopter and climb onto the payload and climb up that, liar, that, cl- climb up that long line a couple times, to- multiple times. Falls down the long line, climbs back up it, and then even just getting to the top, the legs of the helicopter and trying to swing his legs over. Yeah. That looks insanely hard as well. Oh, and they're up in the air on a helicopter. They're in the air on a helicopter. It's, it's just an insane stunt. This whole movie is just breathtaking. It's one of the best action movies ever made, which is why we have so many stunts on here. Yeah. But it's, it's really, really incredible. It's incredible. All right, next up, speaking of lines, we have a pole stunt with police story, Jackie Chan, in one of his death-defying feats inside of the center of the mall. There are bad guys on the first floor and Jackie's on the fourth floor. And he has to get down there immediately. There's only one way to do it. To slide down the pole in the center of the mall. Lit up, st- with stri- strapped with lights. And Jackie did this for real. He was not wired in. He was standing on the ledge of the railing. And then he jumped onto this pole and slid down it. Um, with sparks flying, electricity shocking him, his hands burning, and he crashed into a kiosk in the bottom of the first floor. Insane stunt. That whole scene has a ton of great stunts yeah. in it as well. And, great and fights. he uh, burned his hands horribly in the scene. I bet. It looks like it did. Moving on to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, which used to be called Part 1, but it's just called Dead Reckoning now. <laughs> and obviously we're going to pick Tom Cruise's motorcycle jump off a cliff to skydive to a parachute. Probably the most impressive stunt ever done. It's up there for sure. You could argue it's the greatest movie stunt of all time because it's just so dangerous. Absolutely insanely dangerous. He's not wired in. For their practices, obviously, he was wired in. They had a harness up there and they rigged wiring up there. But he just jumped off a cliff 
they had a ramp, yeah, which they CGI'd into a mountain ridge. So he jumped off a ramp, skydove, parachuted th- to the ground. Crazy. That's so, in, it's insane. You could hear a pin drop in that audience because everyone was anticipating it so much. Yeah. yeah, that was the most quiet I've ever heard in theater. I've never heard a quiet a theater so quiet before. All right, next up at number six, we have another Jackie. It's just gonna be Tom and Jackie mostly. Who am I? Who am? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I don't know. That's the name of the film. Who am I? <laughs> and Jackie in this scene, for real, without any wiring, without any rigging, um, he slides down the angled face of a skyscraper, and it's about a two hundred foot steep. Um, incline, decline of glass windows that he slides down. And he is skirting near the edge of this fucking building as he's sliding down it the whole time. He finally makes it to the bottom, but it's not he's at the, it's not like he's at the bottom of the building. He's still very high up. And so his feet plant, and then obviously the, the momentum drove him forward. And then he immediately had to grab uh, a, an, an awning, not like an awning, but like a, an indent in the building to catch himself from falling down the fucking skyscraper. It's an unbelievable stunt. Watch it online. Who am I? Jackie Chan building. It's insane. Nice. Do the next one, too. All right. So this we have uh, our final James Bond film from The Spy Who Loved Me. This is a great stunt performed by Rick Sylvester, um, the stuntman. What he does is he skis off. The ridge of Canada, Canada's Asgard Cliff, which is a massive mountain ridge. Um, he, so he skis off of the powdered cliff and free falls down into nothing. And then he pulls out a parachute with the British flag on it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, they, I believe they did it just in one take, and it's, it looks so cool. It's one of the best openings in a Bond movie ever. Yeah, and we're in the top five. That was number five. Number four on our list... We're going to talk about The Thing from Another World, the original movie, which obviously The Thing is based off of. The Thing from Another World features the first ever full-body fireburn. And back in 1951, this is pioneering fireburns right here. So Tom Steele body doubled as James Arness, The Thing, during the filming. And in the scene, The Thing comes into a room. He's in a doorway. He's like, ah, I'm going to kill all you guys. Mm -hmm. And then... The men and the, the characters in the movie, they light him, they throw kerosene on him and set him on fire. And he just cr- comes running through the scene like crazy. And to continue the fire burn, they keep throwing buckets of kerosene on him throughout oh the God. course of the, the scene. It's absolutely insane, especially for this time. 1951, you know, they didn't have the gels. They, um, they wore fireproof suits, like thick, thick fireproof suits, suits yeah. underneath. So this is still a very dangerous thing to do back then in 1951. They didn't have even close to the safety protocols they have now. And it's absolutely incredible. And he wore an asbestos suit oh, with man. a special fiberglass helmet. And he had his own oxygen supply underneath, which is also dangerous to have oxygen that yeah. close to fire. Yeah. So Holy it's a crazy dangerous stunt. Wow. But it looks epic. Unbelievable. All right. We're in the top three now. At number three, we have another Jackie Chan stunt. This is from Project A. So in this sequence, at the very end of the film, Jackie Chan is at the top of a clock tower dangling, hanging on for dear life. And then what happens is he ends up losing his grip and falling down. Jackie falls through several awnings and lands flat, smack dab, onto the ground below. Um, He did this for real. I don't understand how he survived this fall. It's insane. Uh, he was taken away on a stretcher, and you can see it at the end of the credits of the film. Um, but he survived, and it looks amazing. It's absolutely death-defying. Um, this is just, like, the man, how he survived all of these stunts and all of these um, death, like, these moments of, like, encountering death is just beyond me. Like, holy shit. But this is definitely his most dangerous stunt and one that it's highly possible he, he could not have walked away from it. Really great stuff. Let's get into number two on our list where we have Mission Impossible Fallout again for the last time. Don't worry. Specifically, the Halo Jump, which is an incredible wonder that starts inside the back of a plane that's 25,000 feet in the air. Henry Cavill and Tom Cruise are in the back of this hangar. And then the camera does an adjustment where Ethan walks to look outside. He sees, oh, there's lightning. We can't do this. But then... Walker convinces him to do it, but this is when Walker is swapped out with a different stunt guy, and the stunt guy jumps, and then 
Ethan's forced to jump because Walker jumped. And then this wonder continues as Tom Cruise jumps from the plane, 25,000 feet high in the air, with the cameraman who jumped also, and they oh performed God. the stunt brilliantly, and they trained for it intensely. It took them months and months of training. I think they did over 200, maybe over 300 jumps before they were comfortable enough to do this stunt because it had to be at timed so well, had to be at the right timing, the right locations. You only have so many tries you can do per day. So it took months and months just to train for this one sequence, but it's absolutely incredible. Breathtaking, death-defying, jaw on the floor in the theater kind of stunt. It's insane. I think it's still the best of Tom's career. Yeah, I think it's the best thing he's done for stunt work. It's really, really incredible, man. It's fucking epic. That's why we have it at number two. And then at number one, we have the incredible ancient historical epic Ben-Hur uh, with the chariot race sequence. So the chariot race, first and foremost, is just one of the most incredible stunt sequences ever captured on film in history. Um, they, what it is, it's several, it's eight, they built 18 chariots and each chariot had four horses and the actors and stuntmen really did ride these around this huge track. It was at the time the biggest set ever built in Hollywood history, um, as well as the film also included over 2000 horses in total, but this sequence had, uh, several hundred. And so it's basically a chariot race around the track. And what's impressive is not just the logistics, um, but Charlton Heston was actually a talented horse rider and he steered his own chariot. The other actor was not, so some of his stuff was uh, done with stunt doubles, but Charlton Heston did all of his stunt work in this sequence. But the most impressive moment of the film is one of the crashes. And this is an iconic moment in history where one of the rival chariot racers, he crashes and then he's the stuntman is flung up uh, 20 feet in the air. And then his chariot too is thrown up in the air and he's still hanging on, he's upside down. And then he lands, he flips over his chariot and lands right at the, the heels of his horses, which is absolutely insane. Um, there are a couple other crashes and wrecks in this sequence as well. Um, many people being dragged across the ground. Um, there's just so much to the scene. Uh, it's epic, it's intense, it's exhilarating. And the only way to do it at this time, remember this is 1959. They didn't have the same stimu uh, uh, regulations and safety standards as they do nowadays, obviously. They just had to do it for real and just try to do the best they can to survive. <laughs> but it is really one of the most astounding sequences ever done. And it is, it is home to some of the, just a couple of the most incredible stunts ever done, ever in history. And well, that wraps our 100 greatest movie stunts of all time. I'm sure you have some other ones that you would like to see on here, but let us know what they were. Send us a DM or leave a comment on the YouTube section of this episode or a prompt on Spotify, and we'll, we'd love to see what stunts you think deserve to be on here. We love stunt work. We love stunt performers. They are so essential to cinema and movie making. They make it possible. They put their lives on the line and their bodies in harm just for our entertainment and because they love to do it and we love them so much. I have an honorable mention too. Oh, let's hear it. It's going to be Shrek. Shrek sliding down the dragon's back. It's a pretty intense stunt. Shrek also, did it himself, right? He, you know, he, he hit his groin on the tail on the way down too, so. Trained for two months. Yeah, trained that. for two months in that, in that suit, the, the suit of armor and everything. Kudos to Shrek. Yeah, good job, Shrek. The new Tom Cruise. Just kidding. We, we love stunties. They're the best. We love stunts. We love action movies, but you'd be surprised how many non-action movies have incredible stunt work in them. Mm -hmm. It's almost every single movie has stunt work, pretty yeah. much, except for like maybe a, a movie that takes place in a room. That's it. Aside <laughs> from that, stunties are, are needed. They're required, required to finish a movie and make a movie. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Leave those ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple. And take care, everybody. See you next time. This episode was executive produced by our chosen one patrons, Cody Moen, Andrew Hagen, Benjamin Cook, Calvin Murphy Griggs, Darian, Tyler McFly, Mark Nikaj. Our chosen one patrons are our biggest supporters. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. Notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere. You can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel. Raiders of the Lost Podcast is a mirror image production. Sound mixing done by Jacob Kosler. Opening music by Chase Jackson.